O'Connor has continued with 47 career TD passes and miraculous comebacks over Auburn, Georgia, and Florida State. But the Hungry Gators will have a tough time making a meal of Miami. Last year, the Hurricane Sack Pack, led by Daniel Stubbs, rang Kerwin's bell early and often in a 23-15 victory. Bolstered by nine returning starters on defense, Miami will be looking for their fourth consecutive trip to a New Year's Bowl. The battle lines have been drawn, and revenge is sweet, so the Gators will be smoking. You're looking live at the Orange Bowl in Miami. A sellout due to a huge contingent of Florida Gator fans trying to take the home field advantage away from Miami in this bitter state rivalry. SEC 87 kicks off with the battle by the beach as Miami plays host to Florida. everybody, along with Tim Foley, this is Bob Neal, back for our sixth year of college football television here on TBS. And Tim, they said it wouldn't last. <laughs> it's been almost 100 games now. We've been having a good time. When we last left the University of Florida, when they were last on television, it was 1984. Florida had beaten Kentucky in Lexington. We were televising the game, and the Gators were apparently on their way to an SEC championship. Galen Hall was about to be named head coach. Kerwin Bell was a rookie. Now we pick him up again as they come off probation. Bell is after the Heisman. Galen, a high respected coach so it's been a while since we've seen Florida yeah and they've got their TV makeup has had a two-year rest in the meantime University of Miami has been on television 14 times in the last two years as they showcase Vinny Testaverde on his way to the high school it's a big time game at the Orange Bowl in Miami between Florida and the University of Miami will be back here at the Orange Bowl but right now back to our studios in Atlanta and Craig Sager Welcome to the old Milwaukee Insiders Report. Information both on and off the field. A total of 24 Division I A schools have different coaches from a year ago. That's one out of every four. Want job security? Don't be a football coach. At Alabama, they went outside the family to hire Bill Curry of Georgia Tech. Paul Ryden reports. This is Legion Field in Birmingham, where the University of Alabama is about to usher in a new era, the Bill Curry era. It was on this field seven years ago that Curry made his debut as coach at Georgia Tech. His Yellow Jacket team lost that day 26-3 to Alabama and Bear Bryant. Curry told me his pulse rate is up. He's excited and focused, not nervous, just excited. One interesting note, Curry goring with quarterback David Smith, who's only thrown four passes his entire collegiate career. That's the first of what could be a season of surprises. In Birmingham, Alabama, I'm Paul Ryden for the Old Milwaukee Insider Report. There is less pressure on Steve Spurrier, the new coach at Duke. The first play he calls tonight should be one to remember. It will look something like this. Five years ago, California scoring the winning touchdown against Stanford. Those two teams playing in the final game of the 1982 season. If you recall, everybody ran out of the field thinking that Stanford had won the ball game. But California, with several laterals, came by and made a miraculous play at the end of the game. And California upset Stanford and kept John Elway from going to a bowl game. It was one of the greatest plays in college football history. I don't know if the one will match it tonight. However, Spurrier does say that there will be a trick play with four or five players touching the ball. I'll be back at halftime with scores and highlights. The Old Milwaukee Insider Report has been brought to you by Old Milwaukee Beer and Old Milwaukee Light, two of America's great tasting beers. It doesn't get any better than this. Snake River, Wyoming and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Snake River means fly fishing for lunker cutthroat trout. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. An Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee light. Fellas, it just doesn't get any better than this. When you're rocking down the highway, keep your engine rolling with a motor oil specially formulated for your car. Valvoline has high-performance formulas for turbo cars, four-cylinder cars, hard-driven cars, all cars. Valvoline. Motor oil is not just motor oil.
Sports presentation of SEC football is brought to you by Delta Airlines, serving more than 150 cities worldwide. Delta gets you there with care. And by Valvoline High Performance Motor Oil. Valvoline, because motor oil is not just motor oil. And by Holiday Inn. If you're a winner, we're on your way. Just moments away from kickoff at the Orange Bowl in Miami. The temperature 90 degrees. There is a slight chance that there could be a shower, but you see mainly just white fluffy clouds over the Orange Bowl. It's a prescription athletic turf. The field is in excellent condition and a great place to start the 1987 football season. And Tim, let's start talking now about this game and the specifics of it and across the country. Everybody's talking about, of course, Kerwin Bell. And Kerwin Bell is going to be after the Heisman Trophy this year. The team, the University of Florida, six and five last year. They've been hurt by probation and loss of recruits and scholarship, but they have a very good front line, and as I mentioned, Kerwin Bell. They're getting booed by about half the fans here in the Orange Bowl because they're mad about Florida dropping Miami after this game. Here come the Hurricanes. A perfect season last year till they lost to Penn State. And now Jimmy Johnson is back. He lost Vinny Testaverde, the Heisman Trophy winner. But Jimmy Johnson has a new young quarterback. So let's not talking about those two teams. And let's first of all deal with Kerwin Bell and his chase for the Heisman. Well, it's really unfortunate that people across the country haven't been able to see Kerwin over the last two years because he pulls, uh, pulls out plays that seemingly are miraculous. And he's a quality young man that's got a legitimate chance at the Heisman. Unfortunately, he's got six wide receivers that have only caught 21 balls when you put them all together. So they're going to be going against a very experienced secondary for the University of Miami. Probably the strongest part of Miami's football team is their secondary. Benny Blades, an All-American, is is really not that much better than the other three performers in that defense. And there's a big story for Miami, not a good story, and that is that Dan Cilio, a very good defensive lineman, has been declared ineligible. Also very unfortunately for Dan and for the University of Miami. I think they were counting on Cilio to be the catalyst, as Jerome Brown was last year, to kind of ignite that Miami defense. He won't be there. Uh, Stubbs will miss him. Miami will miss him. And for the University of Miami, an untested quarterback. Testaverde, Kozar, Kelly gone. Enter Steve Walsh. And Walsh, Walsh's greatest asset, as you see him there, is his ability to understand this offense and drive the car. He is not going to be a Kelly. He's not going to be a Testaverde or Kosar. Doesn't have that kind of raw skill. But he can be a good field general, and that's what they're counting on him to be today. And Florida's defense a pretty good one. Mention one guy, Jarvis Williams. Jarvis Williams, All-American defensive back. Clifford Charlton will put a lot of pressure on Steve Walsh. We'll be back here for the kickoff just moments away at the Orange Bowl in Miami. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. It's the selection of all those 4x4s four four at one place. And all those 2x4s at such a low price. 4x4s. Four 2x4s. Four you know, when we talk trucks, there's one thing we always agree on. From Mr. Mays to Mr. October, nobody beats this Ford team. You'll find every choice in great Ford-like trucks like these. The Bronco 2, the Aerostar van, the Ford Bronco, all-size pickups. Hey, Reg, how do you get your trucks so cheap, man? How else? I held out. Boy, if anybody knows how to hold out, it's him. It's been around a long time, but never like this. High-tech pinfall. Integrated by Don Carter's All-Star Lanes. Register for leagues forming now. If you could combine the world's best cars into one car, you'd probably want a premium gasoline that lets it perform its best. One that controls deposits while cleaning intake systems. High-octane Chevron Supreme with Tecrolene cleans not just fuel injectors, complete intake systems. 
Chevron Supreme delivers high performance no matter what car you drive. Chevron Supreme. The Orange Bowl in Miami. It is 90 degrees. It is sold out 75,000 plus. The University of Miami will receive Florida getting set for the kickoff. It'll be number six, Robert McGinty, who has a very strong leg for Florida, a senior from Neptune Beach, kicking the ball for the Florida Gators. Their first time on television since 1984, coming off the probation, along with the loss of scholarships in Florida. Very excited about being back on national television today. Miami, one of the most televised teams in America the last couple of years. Back deep for Miami, number three is Randall Hill. Number 21, Alex Johnson. Johnson at his goal line. Down at the nine. That's John Spirito. Special teams player, wide receiver for the Gators, making the first hit on television since 1984. And now the University of Miami. As I said, Kozar, Kelly, Testaverde are gone. Steve Walsh, the quarterback, and a lot of the load will fall on the broad shoulders of fullback Melvin Bratton. He gave Florida more than they could handle last year. Gary Mahon, a, a very important player over there at the left side. Mahon is replacing the injured John O'Neill there. We'll keep a close watch on first down. Maybe a yard or two. Let's take a look at the defense for the University of Florida. The defensive line, Rondi Weston, Jeff Roth, and Henry Brown. Roth missed a lot of the ball practice with a sore lower back, but he's healthy and back now. The linebackers are led by Clifford Charlton. He's the pass rusher. Gerald Dixon playing in place of the injured Todd Gatlin. Jarvis Williams, an All-American candidate, leads a very good secondary. Warren Williams out to the 13 and not much more. It'll be third down long. Bob, in situations like this, the beginning of a game, your heart is always pounding. And as you look at Steve Walsh, I guarantee you can hear the blood going through your ears. And what you have to do is maintain your composure. Jimmy Johnson doesn't want to cause something bad to happen early. They got very poor field position, starting from their own 10-yard line. He's going to be conservative down in this area of the field. It's third down six from the 14-yard line. Two receivers to the left of your screen, one up at the top for Miami. Here comes Charlton. A shovel pass forward to Bratton. Out for the first down. A heads-up play by the third-year sophomore quarterback, Steve Walsh. And how'd you like that one, folks? Two deep zone, good coverage by Florida. Never really a chance to look as Roth had him wrapped up and he dumps it off to Melvin Bratton. Let's watch Clifford Charlton coming from the left side of your screen. And Charlton is a guy that they're trying to get out to him with Scott Proven. Didn't quite get there. First pass. It is complete for the 27-yard line to Warren Williams. We'll call it the second pass because the first one, even though it was a shovel pass, was called a forward pass, and so now Steve Walsh is two for two. It's got to help the young man's butterflies. No question about it. Early on, I'm sure Gary Stevens, who's really the doctor of pass here at Miami, he's the offensive coordinator, wants to get confidence level up in Steve Walsh. He felt well about it going into the game, but once you got a couple in the chest of a receiver, you feel much better. Second down three. Chased out of bounds at the 29. He's short of the first down. Needs to get to the 31. Pat Moore making the stop. Number 45. One of the two inside linebackers for Florida. They have good linebackers, but there is a question mark as to how well Gerald Dickens will play in place of the injured junior Todd Gatlin. They're really inexperienced in there. Pat Moore was a walk-on freshman last year. Made a nice interception in this particular game last year, but they're inexperienced in the middle. Gatlin getting hurt this week in practice really thins the ranks. Irvin to the left, Brian Blades to the right, on third down one. Here comes Williams, in the backfield, thrown for a five-yard loss. 
Big third down play led by the nose tackle, Jeff Roth. Walsh called this play at the line of scrimmage, running away from Clifford Charlton. Jason Lambert does an excellent job of closing the playoff, turning it in, making the stop. Jeff Beagles is in to punt. See him standing at about his 12-yard line. Look out. Big trouble. Out of the end zone for a safety. A big break for Florida. things are taken for granted, Bob, in the special teams. And here's a guy that you never talk about until something goes wrong. The man that snaps on the punt. He becomes famous after a play like that. So, it is Florida with the 2 to nothing lead. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. No matter how you drive, drive your engine clean with Mobile Super Unleaded Detergent Gasoline. It can unclog fuel injectors and give your car a new injection of power. Drive your engine clean with Mobile Super Unleaded. High octane with a plus. Get a free Dolphin's glass with every fill up of eight gallons or more of Mobile Super Unleaded Plus. What's the most trouble-free new car sold in America? Once again, it's a Toyota. This year, it's a Toyota Cressida. Who could ask for anything more? Okay, last time. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? gets a break on the bad long snap over the head of the punter Jeff Fiegels leads two to nothing and now has the football in excellent field position for Kerwin Bell and the troops there's the correct score Florida two, Miami nothing Kerwin Bell will have Wayne Williams and Anthony Williams and a host of running backs back there as a matter of fact Octavius Gould is starting but you'll see several players David Williams the best offensive lineman for Florida a lot of other question marks there on the first down Bell it is complete to Simmons down for a loss of about a half a yard Stacy Simmons a sophomore from Clearwater Rod Carter number 91 with a stop for Miami Here's the defensive lineup now for the Miami Hurricanes, one of the best defenses in the country. Jimmy Jones, the man who has to replace Cilio, who was ruled ineligible late yesterday. Daniel Stubbs is the big playmaker on that defensive line. He's the sack leader with 30 career sacks for Miami. George Myra Jr., the heady leader at middle linebacker and All-American, Benny Blades, leads an excellent secondary for the Hurricanes. It is second down. We will call it 10, a little longer than 10. Looks like they got Jimmy Jones to jump on that one. Jimmy, of course, is jumpy, you might say, as he, he hasn't known all week whether he's going to start, whether he's going to play, whether Cilio is going to play. It's been a tough call for him. Ball foul. Okay. Al Ford is an SEC official. This is a combination of officials, of officials from the Southeastern Conference and from the Southern Independent Collegiate Officials Association. Jimmy Johnson, of course, uh, a defensive coordinator in a previous life at Oklahoma State and in Arkansas. Or a head coach at Oklahoma State, but at Arkansas and Pittsburgh. Bell goes down. It is Florida's ball. Problems with the exchange there with center Tracy Daniels. <laughs> There's the Florida mascot with an interesting sign. I guess we're ranked third and fourth in his mind, but that's all right. We'll take a top five ranking from the Gator mascot. Kerwin Bell. Great year, 1986. Third down five. Bell with a lot of time. It's complete. 
for the first down to the 41-yard line. Receiving the ball, Octavius Gould, the tailback who started in place of Wayne Williams. Seven-yard gain, first down, Florida. It, Kerwin Bell has time to throw the ball. It may be a long afternoon for the Miami defense. Jimmy Davis at the top of your picture did a nice job keeping Danny Stubbs out of there. And again, they're going to miss the pressure from the middle as Cilio isn't playing. Octavius, call me liquid, Gould. Okay. Inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Florida is leading in this game two to nothing on a bad snap over the head of the punter, Jeff Beagles, and a safety. Florida started with very good field position on this drive. They started at their own 46-yard line. Galen's got the headsets on. Offensive coordinator at Oklahoma was a coach at uh, Oklahoma for 18 years. Second down, seven. Hit in the backfield, number 31, Gould. Dropped back here at the 45-yard line. It was Jimmy Jones, 63 with the penetration. Loss of five. From watching, from watching University of Miami film, they're going to be a real hard team to, uh, to draw because usually they've got some games going on the inside. They may be a little simpler, though, today with Cilio not in there, counting more on the straight-ahead rush. Jimmy Jones from Okeechobee, Florida. He had to miss a day of practice this week, had an illness in the family, and had to go home. Didn't know if he was going to play or whether Cilio was going to play. And we've got a timeout, Florida. Kerwin Bell going over to the sideline. It will be third down 12 for Florida, leading two to nothing, 8.50 to go. Quarter number one from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. Great American face, rugged, distinctive. The Great American Razor, Actra, solid, pivots for closeness. The Great American face deserves the Great American shave. Actra, only from Gillette. Okay, last time. This is drugs. This is the brain on drugs. Any questions? Florida leads two to nothing on the safety when the ball was snapped over the head of Miami punter Jeff Beagles. And now it's third and 12 Gators from the 44 of Miami. Hawkins jumping off on the right side of the defensive line for Miami. Al Ford, the man in the white hat, he's the referee. The offensive lineman, Bob, cannot move. Once he's got his hand out. out it goes down white. It's still third down. So the penalty goes against Florida. Now it's third down and close to 19 yards. They're going to move it all the way back to the 50. It has to get to the 31 for the first down. You know, Bill Hawkins can come across the line and go back as long as the ball's not stab, snapped. An offensive lineman has to maintain his position. That hand on the ground, he can't move. Here's the inexperience of this Florida team. says we'll get better if we can avoid injuries. Later in the year, we'll be a lot stronger as we gain experience. Big snap to Bell. Nice grab. And Bell goes down at the 40. It's his old friend Danny Stubbs, his 31st career sack. But now you're going to see one of the premier defensive linemen in the country operate here, working against Jimmy Davis for Florida. Gets his hands on him early around him and that's it the ability to turn it back inside that quickly is what makes Stubbs so great he gets some sacks on a flush pressure coming from up the middle but that one was all on his own Jamie McAndrew with the punt Cleveland Gary a transfer from Georgia with the reception 
down to the 23-yard line. That's his first play as a Miami Hurricane. He was hit by number 30, Steve Loden. 44-yard punt, 10-yard return. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Life of Pope John Paul II, brought to you by the Rainbow Family, a most trusted name in sales and service. When you come to a Rainbow dealer, you'll get more than just a car, truck, or van. You'll get friendly, expert advice. You'll shop in a cool, comfortable showroom. Why, you can even kick the tires if you want. Get as low as 1.9% financing or up to $1,000 rebates. Bring your family to the Rainbow family. Rainbow Ford, Rainbow Dodge, and Rainbow Isuzu. Un hombre quien puede confiar en ventas y servicios. Our most trusted name in sales and service. The Rainbow family welcomes the Pope to Miami. Pope John Paul II is truly at home in many different countries, being able to read, speak, and write in six major languages. He is fluent in Polish, Italian, German, French, English, and Latin, and he is nearly fluent in Russian and Japanese. In addition, the Pope makes certain he can communicate the basics everywhere he visits. He has given blessings in dozens of languages. Question about it. The University of Miami has really improved their standing in that particular area. It's first down 10. The Hurricanes trailing 2 0. Hand off to the fullback, Warren Williams. Not much going out across the 25 to the 26. Gerald Dickens, number 40, on the stop for the Gator defensive unit. As a matter of fact, in talking to Jimmy Johnson, he takes great pride in the fact that last year uh, they graduated 72% of their seniors, which is exceptional in, in today's high pressure athletic schedule sidelines. Miami in the orange jerseys. Florida in the orange pants. It's a sea of orange in the orange bowl. It went right off the arms of Charles Henry and it was popped up there for anybody's catch but none of the Florida defenders could get to it. And Steve Walsh throws the incompletion. The young third year sophomore. He redshirted. St. Paul, Minnesota. The last time that Steve Walsh started a game, Tim, was 1984 in a high school playoff game in Minneapolis. But I'm sure they've been trying to create as much pressure as possible, uh, as possible in practice to get him used to the game situations. Third down eight from the 26. Here comes the pass rush. There's Charlton in the face. It's complete to Brent. Close to the first down. It'll depend on the spot. Right near the 34. Tripped up by number four, Kerry Watkins. Finished off by Oliver. Carlton was right in the face of Walsh. Hand down and coming in a third down passing situation. Just trying to drive him deep as Gary Mahan drive him around the quarterback for screen on all the way. And this is how they're helping Walsh. They're letting him make the easy throw and then leaving it up to these skilled Miami backs to get the yardage. First and 10 passing, dump it in the flat, turn that back loose out in the open. As you can see, they spot the ball about six inches shy of the first down and the punting situation again. And Willis Pegues is number 58, is the long snapper. Let's see if Willis is back in there this time. He snapped it over the head of punter Jeff Beagles on the first one, in and out of the end zone for the safety. And Pegues is back in there. He's the long snapper, and boy, you talk about pressure. Good snap this time. Beagles, the senior, has it almost blocked. It may have been touched. It's going to go out of bounds, gets a good Miami bounce at the 38-yard line. So the punting game a problem early on for Jimmy Johnson's Hurricanes. The snap over the head for the safety, and this time possibly a partial block as the ball is shanked off to the right side. It's difficult enough for a punter to maintain his uh, concentration as you look at the coaching staff from the... Uh, the uh, Oklahoma University football team in 1970 to 72. Chuck Fairbanks, the head coach there. Galen Hall, offensive coach. Jimmy Johnson, Barry Switch and Larry Lacewell, head coach at Arkansas State. Good group of guys. Jim Dickey, who's now the secondary coach with Florida. First down 10, Florida from their own 33. Out to the 42-yard line goes Wayne Williams, the tailback. 
And you're going to see a lot. Dick, check that. It's 36. Anthony Williams. You're going to see a lot of backs for Florida. You're going to see 23 Wayne Williams, 36 Anthony, 39 Cedric Smith, 42 James Massey, 31 Octavius Gould, and eventually you're going to see a star, possibly a Borning, and that is the most highly recruited running back in the nation last year, Emmett Smith. Borning. A Borning. I like that. Look that up. See if that's a real word. Not much. Wayne Williams stopped at about the 40. Randy Shannon, number 22. And you're looking at the Hurricane defensive unit. And by the time this season's over, Tim, this could be the best defensive unit in America. It's certainly one of the top five. They've really got high expectations for this defense. And if there was one word that would define it, it's attacking, penetrating. From the moment the ball snapped, they're not going to be hitting and reading. They're going to be penetrating upfield, getting a gap, down linemen, trying to be double teamed to free up the linebackers. So far, both defenses dominating this game. 5.46 to go first quarter. Complete to Cedric Smith. Good job of running after the catch. And it's a first down, and it's Anthony Williams with the reception. Number 36, 15-yard gain. Derwin Jones, 86, applied the pressure to him. The last time the U of M was in a third down situation, they came with the screen. Florida was doing the same thing. It was well covered by the Hurricanes, and Bell made it happen on his own. Anthony Williams, the second leading receiver on the team last year, did a good job of finding an open spot. Now Cedric Smith is in, Octavius Gould is in. Smith, Cedric Smith, 39, Gould, 31, back the open meters on first down 10. Given the 39, Cedric Smith running hard, close to a first down. Stopped at the 35. Florida may not have what Galen Hall would call a star in his backfield, but he certainly got several very good runners in the backfield. He's got some more courses, and really that's the only place that this team is deep. Galen, of course, is used to John Hell Williams, Neil Anderson, Billy Sims at Oklahoma, Elvis Peacock, so he's been spoiled in that way, but he's got good depth at running back, although no one has really emerged as a super producer. Second down one from the 35. And off to the front man, it's Cedric Smith to the 27-yard line. Rod Carter with the tackle. Florida running better than Miami had hoped they would. Remember, missing from the Miami front four, Dan Cilio declared ineligible late yesterday. And they are trying to take advantage of that. Dave Wan said the defensive coordinator for the Hurricanes felt they had to make Florida throw the ball to be effective. Galen now very happy with the way the offensive line is moving and the backs are running for the Gators. Big questions on how that offensive line would play with the exception of perhaps left tackle David Williams. They've played well thus far today, particularly once they shook the butterflies. Bell for the autumn, first and ten. Nice hole. Gould comes up near the 25-yard line, tackled by number 32, Selwyn Brown. There's Octavius Gould. He's a sophomore from Browns Mill, New Jersey. wonder if it's hot there's one of Tim's fans <laughs> and the temperature let's see on the field 190 degrees that's hot <laughs> never a dull moment <laughs> it said what was that about 190 at least officer I was only going 55 so that reminds me of second down seven from the 25 Bell the play fake the pass incomplete over the outstretched arms of 39 Cedric Smith at the 20 Bell not real sharp early. He is three for four. But it's the first game of this year, and you can bet that Kerwin Bell is ready to play. And what a story. Galen Hall was telling me when I was in Gainesville on Wednesday, and I know you talked to him earlier, Tim, uh, of his memory of that Tuesday before the Miami game, the freshman year of Kerwin Bell, when Dale Dormany was injured, and they had to go find Kerwin. Galen, who was offensive coordinator, said, I had to go look at film to remember how this guy played because he had been eight string prior to moving up to second team. Third and seven from the 25. Bell in the pocket as a man. Got there late, broken up nicely by that excellent Miami defensive tandem. It was intended for 20, Lomack, Donald Ellis, the man with his hands on the ball, number 29. Stubbs putting on the pressure here. Jimmy Davis come out, trying to get a hand on him, trying to get that right hand on him, stab him, drive him around the quarterback. Bell steps up well. Gould was open, coming across underneath. Womack didn't really have it. 
Donnie Ellis right there along with Selwyn Brown. And the field goal attempt by Robert McGinney is wide. It was a 42-yard attempt. Florida continues to lead by a score of two to nothing thanks to the safety after Miami's first possession in this game. 3-11 to go, quarter number one. We load and unload a lot of bags at Delta. It's hard work, but I like it. This bag here isn't mine, but I take care of it like it is. And I try real hard to get it to you just as fast as I can. I'm proud of my job, and I'm proud of Delta. And you know what? When you feel that way, you just naturally take care. Delta gets you there. We get you there with care. Just sign here, man. But this is more than what your sign says. Well, sure, you're using your credit card instead of cash. Excuse me. If your service station charges a higher price for credit cards than cash, take your business elsewhere. Take your business to Gulf, the people who don't charge you more for credit cards. Come again. Gulf, one low price, cash or credit. Kerwin Bell taking a breather. It's 90 degrees down there. Some injuries affect particularly the Miami team, Tim. They feel like Brett Perriman was as, at least as good as Michael Irvin. Uh, his, his final receivers they have, they're going to miss him on offense, and we'll get back to the rest of those in a minute. Dave Walsh. Richardson hits him as he releases it to Brighton. To the 40-yard line, Kerry Watkins with the tackle. The reception and run by senior Melvin Bratton. 34-yard gain. See, here's the plan by Gary Stevens. Bratton is helping out on a blocking, and if nothing's open, initial man not open, Bratton checks down. That gives Walsh a three-yard throw. He just dumps it here to Bratton, and now look at this. Dip and dodge, look out. Hard to corral, scored three touchdowns last year against Florida. You can see you don't want to be taking him on one-on-one. -on -one. Miami on the move, Walsh. Complete at the 25-yard line, tried to get it to tight end Charles Henry. Couldn't hold on to it. Nice pass by Walsh, however. It was right there. It was right there, and Charles Henry needs to take that route a little bit deeper. He was running it in behind Michael Irvin, who had cleared out the cornerback. Needs to get a little bit more depth. That way, Walsh can loft the ball in there, make it an easier catch for him. Second down, 10 Miami. 2.36 to go. First quarter. Florida leads 2-0. On a safety was snapped over Miami punter Jeff Beaver's head in and out of the end zone. And off to 24 Warren Williams. About 37. And down he goes. If you want to talk about underrated, Warren Williams might be the most underrated player on the Miami offense. One of the finest north-south runners that I've ever seen. He's not going to uh, give you as many moves as Bratton. He's going to take it upfield. He may give you a little dip, but then pow, he's heading upfield and also a fine receiver. Now, you talked about Perriman being out. Now, the three receivers are in there for Miami. They like it. Irvin Blades, but they have to go with Brown instead of Perriman, and this weakens them, Tim. It does weaken them, and Brown had a problem with his ring finger, dislocated his finger, so he's not 100%. On third down, complete to Williams. To the 23-yard line, Warren Williams tackled by Jarvis Williams. 12-yard gain, and Walsh is looking heady. Five of seven for 67 yards. Nice poise. Just a little man-to-man -man underneath by Florida. Tolbert Bain makes the tackle, and it's a four-yard gain. That's what you have to do. They dump the ball underneath, come up, make the hit, make the play. Hurricane started this drive on their own 26. They're down to the 23 of Florida. Walsh, good protection. In the end zone, coverage is there. The ball is caught by Brian Blades. Even though the coverage by Watkins was there, it's a touchdown, Miami. the brother of the All-American safety, Benny Blades. 
Great coverage by Watkins. Nice toss and everything, but you've got to credit Brian Blade with coming up with the big reception. Yeah, and you credit Steve Walsh with putting that ball in a place that if, if, if Blades doesn't make the catch, it's going to be an awfully hard catch for Watkins to make. He's turning around, trying to rotate in the air, looking back into the sun. Florida going for two. They know about that. Uh, Miami going for two. They know about Florida's safety. Walsh complete to Brian Blades. Blades responsible for eight points. First the touchdown, then the two-point conversion, and this young Steve Walsh. And Brian Blades are maybe becoming a powerful combination. Florida throwing, uh, Miami throwing the football, well-coached group. Watch Brian Blades sliding up, going up for the ball. Watkins in good shape. Blades just hands with it makes the catch on the rebound just excellent concentration on the ball and that just comes from working on working and working and working that 20 yard line in situation throw it down there in the corner receiver leaping for the ball Yahoo, Dad. well you've just got to feel good for Steve Walsh particularly that's the first touchdown pass that the Florida defense has given up in 27 quarters of football the two-point conversion here. They run a little pick. Blades just biding his time. If it was, they were counting on a man-to-man -man coverage down in there, and Blades was going to try to screen off his man as he came through the traffic. Actually, it was a zone that looks like they got a little confused, and that set, and Blades came open. That's Walsh talking to Testaverde, Kosar, and Kelly, getting some more tips here. Maybe it's the uniform. Walsh looking great. Kerry Watkins at his five from Florida. Big opening. He falls down goes down just outside the 35. They may even say his knee touched back earlier than that. They're going to spot the ball inside the 35-yard line. Gary Watkins hits the ground, and Florida trails now. 8-2 to two with a minute 25 to go in the first quarter. Florida gets the safety on the bad Miami snap, but Walsh throws the 23-yard touchdown pass and then the two-point conversion to Brian, the brother of Benny Blades. Start soon saying... Benny's the brother of Brian. Bell gives to Williams, Anthony Williams. About three. Daniel Stubbs, 96 with the tackle. These two teams have played each other every year since 1938, with the exception of one year during the Second World War. And after this game, they will not play each other again until 1992, as Florida has dropped Miami from the schedule. Is it controversial? You bet. Second and seven. Florida running again. Penalty marker down. Ball is down at the 40. David Williams may have been a guilty party there. Number 73, the left tackle for Florida. Yeah, anticipated the snap count a little bit. Gary Stevens, uh, the quarterback coach here at Miami, offensive coordinator, the man that's all foul, ball start against the offense. To work okay. with, work with Kosar and Testaverde, he's got to really be happy about what he's seen from Steve Walsh so far today. He said the hardest thing to teach a new quarterback is to be patient, is to take the dump. You know, sometimes a young kid will think it's not manly to throw the ball just four yards. You know, we need to get it down there like Vinny used to do, and and Steve Walsh just doesn't have that kind of an arm. So you have to play within your limitations and do what you do best. And obviously Gary's excited about what's happened so far. It'll be second down, 12 for Florida, following the penalty. 41 seconds remaining in the first half, making sure they get the first down marker set right on the far sideline. And Steve Walsh has come in here in the shadow of Kerwin Bell's campaign for the Heisman in 1987, has stolen the spotlight for the moment. Walsh, 6 of 8 for 90 yards and 1 TD. Bell has it second and 12 from his own 33. Complete. It would have been a first down reception, but it was past the outstretched fingertips of Walter Odom. He's a good one and a big one. The senior 6'4". He's been out a year and a half due first to a disciplinary suspension and then academic reasons. And Odom is back and he started this game at tight end. 
It's awfully tough for an experienced quarterback to tone down to the adjustments that a new wide receiver might make. That time, Oldham, Odom wasn't open, worked his way up into a seam, and, and that's the kind of thing that Kerwin's used to. A new wide receiver will run around. If he's not open, more often than not, he'll just back down. Third and 12. Bell has his man open. Incomplete, in and out of the arms of number 21, Darrell Woolard. There's the inexperienced receiver. Excellent pass by Bell. Woolard was wide open, simply dropped the ball. Florida right here is running what could be Miami's favorite pattern. Watch this as you start to get depth. Donnie, the cornerback is cle being cleared out. Donnie Ellis and then Woolard comes into that open area deep there and the, coming over to try to make the, try to give help is Ellis, but the, just couldn't get there in time. Bell laid it in perfectly. There was a penalty on that play against Florida for holding. Miami declines it due to the incompletion on the third down. It'll be fourth and 12 from the 33. And Jamie McAndrew comes in to punt. Cleveland Gary, 43, goes back inside his 30-yard line. 25 to take Andrew. Comes Gary. To the 33. And Miami leads in this game 8-2, to two, three seconds remaining in the first quarter. It was Mark Mer Murray, number 54, the linebacker, special teams player with a stop for Florida. 41-yard punt, four-yard return. So there'll be an opportunity for Miami to get off a of play here. Let's see if they're going to. They may not. They elect to. The clock hasn't started yet, of course, with the exchange. First and ten from the 34. Penalty markers go down. Clock expires. That's the end of the first quarter. Warren Williams carrying the ball, but hold everything just a moment to see who this penalty is against. Miami leads 8-2. to two. Florida got the safety on a bad snap. Willis McGee snapped it over the Miami punter. Jeff Fiegel's head into the end zone and out for a two-point safety for Florida. Then a 23-yard touchdown pass from Steve Walsh to Brian Blades, and a two-point conversion has given Miami the 8-2 lead here at the end of the first quarter. Here's Al Ford, the official, with the Dead announcement. Ball foul, illegal procedure against the offense. Still three seconds left in this quarter. It was dead ball. The clock never stopped, thus they do get another opportunity. So the mistake by Miami gives them an opportunity to run the ball again. The right side of the line moving a little bit early. Neither one of these teams actually used to the snap cadence of the quarterback yet. Both teams caught anticipating the snap count. The Resetting the clock here. They'll probably hold it until they get it down to three seconds. There. It's going to take about an hour to play the final three seconds of the first quarter. We're at the Orange Bowl in Miami. It's 90 degrees. Season opener for the Hurricanes. Ranked as high as third in some polls in the preseason. Mainly around 6 through 10. Jim Kelly on the sideline. He was here playing last night in Miami with the Buffalo Bills. The last time I did a University of Miami game, he was playing quarterback for Miami with you. We're in the Mississippi State at Starkville with your friend Chuck Dowdle. WSB. Atlanta. Bratton, one-handed catch. Nowhere to go. That, I promise you, will be the final play of the first quarter with Miami leading 8-2. to two. You're watching SEC football on the turn. Labor Day weekend. Grab the cash from Toyota. Four days only. Factory to dealer incentives up to $1,500 on vans could give you the biggest savings of the year. Plus, get up to $2,000 cash back from the Toyota factory distributor on Elegante vans. All LE Bromes. Get up to $1,500 cash back on selected half-ton long bed trucks. 
1000 back on all Corolla SR5 Sport Coupes and all MR2s with T-Tops. Grab all the cash you can at Toyota dealers all Labor Day weekend. Like most people, I'm affected by the things I see. I don't think passion is a dirty word. Starting September 7th, look who's talking. Geraldo, weekday mornings at 10. At the Orange Bowl, this is technically a University of Miami home game, but with so many Florida alumni, as a matter of fact, there are more Florida alums in the Miami area than there are Miami, with Florida being the large state school and Miami the smaller private school. It's about 50-50 in terms of uh, who's cheering for who here today at the Orange Bowl. Ready for the second quarter. Miami leading by a score of 8-2. to two. Steve Walsh, what a great start. The young, untested third-year third sophomore is having. It's complete to Michael Irvin. 4-5 speed. Payne, number 18, and Lewis Oliver, number 18, drives him out of bounds on the far sideline. Oh, my, 65 yards. Michael Irvin can fly. As I told you, he runs a 4-5-40. Oliver shaken up on the play, number 18 for Florida. And here's, an, here's just an example. Zaven Uralian trying to get some young players in, trying to rotate them in. And there's Dwayne Glover, who's not a regular starter in there, make, misses a tackle, and here goes Michael Irvin. Zoom. Singes the turf down the sideline. Great hustle by Lewis Oliver to get there. Looked like he got kicked in the stomach at the end of it all. That's the 100th career reception for Michael Irvin. Just heading into his junior year. See, when do you get a player experience, Bob? I mean, you just have to do it in a game. You have to take a chance. And, and uh, obviously Miami noticed the change in the secondary and thought they'd try to take advantage of it. That's what you do. When a new defensive back comes into the football game, you know he's going to be anxious. Test him right away. And that's what Jimmy Johnson's team did. And they came up with uh, Peter there. Spotted at the seven-yard line. Miami leads eight to two. First and goal. 65-yard pass completion. Walsh to Irvin. Walsh is going to throw it again. Who would he? Vince is successful. Wanted to go to Irvin again. Incomplete in the end zone. Coverage by 28 Richard Fain, who's a redshirt freshman. Now we're talking about the we talk about Florida's lack of depth. You're seeing what we mean. I don't think he wanted Michael Irving. If you want this pass, you deliver it right now before help can get there. And uh, Irving runs into the Florida safety air coming over Jarvis Williams. And uh, you know me, Bob. I don't believe in pass defense. I wouldn't even close. You believe in defense. You don't believe in interference. Second That's you to me. Yeah. Seven. Here's Warren Williams hitting the backfield at the 13-yard line. Jeff Roth, 96, and 99, Henry Brown with the penetration. Very big play. It'll bring up third down and goal from the 12 for Miami now. Both defensive coordinators, Uralian and Wanstead, told me the same thing. You find out about your defense, you find out the chemistry of your defense when their back is up against the wall. Who's going to come up with the big play? Who's going to make something happen to turn the tide? Henry Brown did at that time. second quarter. Walsh. It's picked up. With the ball, Joey Nicoletto, the junior reserve linebacker. You just don't know who's going to make the big play. It was intended for Alfredo Roberts, and Walsh, after coming up with great play after great play, throws his first interception. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. When the clock everybody now you can get a big mac at mcdonald's for an incredibly low 99 cents so make it a big mac tonight 
Hi, this is Rick Dasman coming live from the MDA Magic 102 Auto Tent Sale. We're here to help Jerry's kids. We have thousands of cars from almost every major manufacturer, and every car sold means $100 to Jerry's kids, new and used cars alike. We have tremendous incentives like 1.9 APR, up to $2,000 cash back, 87 closeout prices, prices slashed. This weekend, you have time to get out here after the game. We'll be here through Monday. Come on out. And the man coverage here. They're trying to clear it out with Irvin. Warren Williams taking it straight up the field. Now Fredo Roberts right there. The ball is a little bit overthrown, and I think Roberts might have felt it was for Williams. Looked like he pulled his hands down almost. Didn't really extend for the ball. Not a bad throw. Good choice by Steve Walsh. First down, 10. Gators inside their five. They just run it. Penalty marker is down. Anthony Williams carrying George Meyer, the middle linebacker, with a stop. Nicoletto got that interception for Florida, the very big play. He's number 49. And Nicoletto is a backup, but he's a very smart one. All SEC academic player last year. Clemson way out in front of Western Carolina. Penn State, of course, Miami fans will be interested in that game. Penn State last year, the 14 to 10 winners in the Big Bowl game. Georgia trailing Virginia at home in the second quarter. North Carolina leading Illinois. Jeff George is at Illinois. He was planning to come to Miami. There's a story there about that young quarterback and Miami's young freshman will tell as we go along here. Florida having to remain very conservative inside their 10. Anthony Williams is hit and tackled by Jimmy Jones at about the nine. One thing you're always concerned about in this situation on defense is the home run, the big ball. Florida have Florida has wide receivers that can really shoot, can really fly. Stacy Simmons was a man in the Junior Olympics this summer. Ernie Mills runs a 4-3-40. Irwin could, Irwin could air it out here. Second down five at about the nine. Hit and dropped in the backfield, Anthony Williams. Greg Mark penetrating the sophomore. Defensive right end backs up Bill Hawkins Greg Mark one of these utility players who can move anywhere along that line this Miami defense is tough to run against particularly tough when they've got you penned up inside the 10 and that's exactly the situation with Florida now third and five for the Gators Miami leading eight to two in the ballgame 12 28 to go second quarter Tried to get it to Tony Lomack. Bell threw it behind and low. It'll be a punting situation for Florida. No place else to go with that ball, Bob. Good drop by the linebackers on a two-deep zone, and uh, Bell had to throw that one away. He gave the receiver a chance to make the catch, but uh, it was just too tough a catch. Jamie McAndrew. drive punt. Cleveland Gary has some room to run, but the great coverage is there. Florida pursues very well, and Gary goes down right about the 45-yard line. Tripped up by 29 Owen Bartram. Finished off by 94 Andy Newman. We have 12.06 to go in the first half. Miami leads 8-2, to and they have the ball with excellent field position. How do other Japanese imports see the 1988 Dodge Ram 50? To Toyota, Ram 50's roomier standard cab looks like this. To Mazda, Ram 50's more powerful standard engine looks like this. And to Nissan, Ram 50's bigger standard payload looks like this. So if you're looking for more than you bargained for, you'll find it at your Dodge dealer, along with the roomy new Ram 50 sports cab. Dodge import trucks, we're going places. The Florida Everglades and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Everglades means airboating, as close as you can get to flying without leaving the ground. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place than old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. Hey, guys. It doesn't get any better than this. Hey. 
This portion of SEC football is brought to you by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And by Dodge Import Trucks and the new Dodge Ram 50. We're going places. 12.06 to go. First half from the Orange Bowl in beautiful Miami. 90 degrees today. Miami leads on the 23-yard touchdown pass from Walsh to Brian Blades and the two-point conversion Walsh to Blade. And Florida's points came on the safety. Bratton running back option pass gets picked off number 18 lewis oliver at the 10 yard line the second interception one off the arm of walsh and this one off the arm of mel brett florida dodges the bullet again no chance on that one bob good job by oliver he was back there all the way williams back there Kerry Watkins, a weak side corner, was running with this receiver, and Bratton just wanted to show him he could throw it downfield. Look at this. And a uh, good catch by Oliver, who is becoming a remarkable safety himself, a walk-on. In the shadow of Jarvis Williams, Lewis Oliver, some people think maybe is good. It's a great safety tandem. First and ten. Gators. First carry of his college career for number 22, Emmett Smith. The young man, the most highly recruited running back in America last year from Pensacola, Florida. You saw Ron Carter come up there, fill it from the inside and get a good shot on the little man, but he's got great balance. He just popped to the outside and kept those feet moving. Walter Payton's size statistics. He's 5'10", 200 pounds. Galen Hall says, you know, I've, I've seen the Greg Fruits and the Joe Washingtons and the Billy Sims, and he looks as good as they did when they were entering their collegiate career, but he says the test comes under fire. Out to the 16 goes Cedric Smith, tackled by George Myra Jr. And that's a play that uh, Larry Zonka made a lot of ground on. Fake the toss, hand it to the fullback, and what you do is you get the line pursuing to the strong side and hoping that the middle linebacker, in this case George Myra, will overrun the play. Almost leave him unblocked, try to cut it back behind him. Speaking of Zonka, you and Zonka and your teammates played a lot of games here at the Orange Bowl. How many did you play here, too? I'll tell you one thing, it's not as hot up here as it was down there, especially on the corner. Third down, five, Gators. Bell under pressure. Incomplete out to the 35-yard line. Intended for Stacy Simmons. And Kerwin Bell is now three for nine for 22 yards. Florida with bad field position the last two possessions. Both times, interceptions stopped Miami scoring drives, but because of the field position, Miami couldn't get anything done. Bell is a lot like Testaverde used to be with the gun, with the rifle. He can get it downfield, and what they have to do is buy him some more time. Hopefully, these young guys can come open from a Florida standpoint. Jamie McAndrew got a good block there. That one might have been Cleveland Gary, down he goes at the 42. 10.56 to go, second quarter, Miami 8, Florida 2. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Toyota Tercel EZ, still priced in the 50s. Contemporary style, contemporary power, but priced at only 5848. So Tercel, traditional Toyota quality and reliability. It's so easy to own Tercel. Still priced in the 50s. Broke the lights for anything more. Toyota. Channel 10 is your hottest sports ticket in town with the hottest coach in the NFL, the one and only Don Shula. How's the new season shaping up for the Miami Dolphins? Join co-host Cambrell Marshall and size up Shula's silver anniversary as an NFL coach. Will top-rated quarterback Dan Marino find the run as successful as the shotgun? Can a new name defense make the difference? Don't miss the regular season kickoff of the Don Shula Show, Monday night, September 14th at 8.30 on the hottest sports ticket in town, the one and only Channel 10. The injured Miami player is defensive tackle Derwin Jones, who had been hampered by an ankle injury, and he's down. Remember, Dan Cilio had been declared ineligible, weakening that line, and this could be a, a terrible blow to Miami's defensive hopes if Derwin Jones is injured with any degree of seriousness. We'll check on it and report back to you. First and 10 Miami from the 41 of the Hurricanes. They lead 8-2. Here's Warren Williams. 
first down carry for Warren Williams. Inside Gator territory, Jeff Reuter with the stop for Florida. Good job by Holder and Proven. Sullivan up there, opening up some holes. Good double team block there. And here's what I mean about Warren Williams. There's 71, Matt Patchen blowing some people out of there, but Williams is everything is upfield, upfield. Doesn't waste a lot of time with lateral moves. Just take it toward the goal line. First down 10, Hurricanes from the 43-yard line of Florida. 10-27 to go, second quarter. Bratton is dropped at the line of scrimmage. Joey Nicoletto, who had the interception, stopping that touchdown thrust by Miami earlier, made the stop there. Nicoletto getting more playing time than they had expected to use him, but because of Todd Gatlin, another inside linebacker's injury, they're having to go to Gerald Dickens and Joey Nicoletto in there. As backups, and Nicoletto's really rising to the task today. Mark Murray's in there also, a redshirt freshman linebacker. Second down, 10 Hurricanes. Walsh with a checkoff. It's complete gain of only a couple of yards. Warren Williams with the reception. Yes, we're in Miami, you can tell. Miami fashions, Miami nice, you might call it. An impact of having so many new players for playing for you on defense is the fact that you really have to simplify. You really have to draw back. You really have to get down to basics. And that keeps you from doing some of the technical things that, uh, that might be more effective against a potent offense like Miami. Third and seven. Irvin. Good enough for the first down. Jarvis Williams with the tackle. Jarvis Williams. Michael Irvin, number 47, who caught the long gainer earlier. Give him a little fake move off the top, Mike. He's, he's running a little delay, break the concentration of the defensive back. Williams closes on it, and that's all you can do in that situation when a receiver comes that flat across the field. It's first down Miami. They lead 8-2, 8.51 to go second quarter. We mentioned Jarvis Williams. He's certainly an All-American candidate, a senior from Palatka, Florida. He has been hampered during the preparations for this game with a sore hamstring. We don't know whether or how much it slowed him down. Here comes Melvin Bratton. Look at the Florida coverage. Bratton stopped for no gain. Jarvis Williams makes the tackle. Penalty marker down in the backfield of Miami. Henry Brown, number 99, may be accused of face masking here. Looked like he perhaps had the grasp. Face mask, white team, 15 yard penalty, first down. And it's flagrant face mask. 15 yards, big one. He's standing there talking to Dan Coglin, the defensive line coach who used to be an assistant at Kentucky and was also at Coral Gables High School here. Fourth University of Florida penalty, and that one was a very big one after a good defensive play. You just saw on the sideline David Arnsbarger. He had a clipboard in his hand, and he's the son of Bill Arnsbarger, now the athletic director at Florida. First and ten Hurricanes inside the Gator 25-yard line. Here comes Warren Williams. Jarvis Williams with a bone-crushing stop that time, his sixth tackle of this game. He is a big hitter. You know, you're, you've got to be impressed with his, his agility and ability to cover quickness a foot, but he is a tough, tough kid for 200 pounds. He put a sock on Melvin Bratton last year. It was, uh, might have been outlawed. Could have been called unnecessary roughness if you had a, a, a you know, quarterback as a receiver, in there. I mean, an official. Brian Blades wide to the left side, Irvin wide to the right side on second down seven. They just run it into the middle, Melvin Pratton, no gain, Jeff Roth with the tackle. It'll be third down now. We're going to come back and uh, show you that face mask. Henry Brown, good pursuit by the Florida defense. Look, they're all right there, and let's see if we can see it. Oh, Henry Brown grabs a lineman. Got a hold of Matt Patch in there. After the tackle had been made, I'm sure Henry liked to have that one back. Third down, five, Miami. 
Walsh, he's getting such good protection today. Almost picked off. Coming after the ball was the linebacker, 40, Gerald Dickens, couldn't hold on to it. And we're going to get a field goal try by the University of Miami. Coming in to attempt the field goal will be Greg Cox, number 25. Walsh is just now getting his breath back, knowing that he dodged a bullet. That was a weak back, what they call a weak back short option. In other words, the weak back turns it up, gets first down yardage, and then takes it inside or outside, depending on the defense. Did a nice job of coverage there. You saw Cox's statistics, four of seven field goals last year. And he's one out of one in 1987. And now Miami takes an 11 to 2 lead with seven minutes, two seconds remaining in the first half. Introducing the 1988 Dodge Raider. Pound for pound, the best standard equipped import 4x4 on or off the road. With everything from automatic locking hubs Toyota's base 4Runner won't give you, to an inclinometer Nissan doesn't have. The way we see it, that's how a 4x4 like Dodge Raider should be. And the way the competition sees Raider is usually like this. Dodge import trucks. We're going places. an ill wind that blows the hurricane warning flags if you're a Gator fan. Hurricanes leading 11 to 2, 702 to go, second quarter. Edgar Benes kicking off number one. Kerry Watkins in his own end zone. Watkins to the 19-yard line and down he goes. He was hit by 31 Freddie Highsmith. Miami leading 11 to 2 with 6.56 to go in this second quarter and Florida has not had good field position for about three years. Now they're at their 19 yard line. And that's affected Bell's statistics, Tim. He's three of nine for only 22 yards, but he's been in real tough passing situations down here inside his 20. Yeah, and they, they haven't really been able to turn it loose, I don't think. Uh, Mike Heimerdinger is the offensive coordinator and you don't want to get too reckless down in this area. Don't do something to beat you at this point in the game. Florida started their last three drives at their own 4-11 and now 19. Bell has a man open this time. It is complete to 36. Anthony Williams out close to the first down. Randy Shannon covering number 22 for the Hurricanes. I'm not sure if Kerwin was going to throw this one or not or if this was a pump all the way. You take a look at it. Whoop! Not there, because Don Ellis was right in the face of the wide receiver, comes back, and finds Anthony Williams on the sideline. Anthony Williams has two catches now for 26 yards. It is enough for the first down. From Stubbs, Bell gets it away anyway, completes Anthony Williams. Another first down to the 43-yard line. Williams breaking the tackle. And Kerwin Bell back there talking to the official. He wanted a roughing the passer call. He just barely gets this one away. Primary receiver not there. Boom. I see what he means. Erwin Bell really took a shot after that. No penalty marker. It looked like the geese coming in. They are the going to call the roughing the passer. And it is a first down. After apparently not calling it, they decided after the discussion, and that'll be tacked on. In other words, that penalty comes on to the end of the game, and it's a very big one, and Florida now penetrates hurricane territory to the 42-yard line. It was certainly a hard hit, and it was definitely after the ball was released, Tim. Yeah, but look and see if he's not. No, you're right. You're right. I was thinking that the man was in the air, but uh, he cer certainly wasn't. Billy Hawkins came around there and had an ability to pull off, at least make the contact less severe. 
Not much that time. It's Cedric Smith, 39, inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Miami leading 11 to 2. And I think that's all they're looking for. If you're in a situation like that, I don't think there's a way that Hawkins could have avoided contact. But but you can back off. You know, you can take your foot off the gas pedal and not really try to inflict an injury. There's the Florida Gator mascot. A lot of Gator burgers being eaten in the last couple of days by Hurricane fans. <laughs> I, I didn't partake of that. Second down seven from the 39-yard line of Miami. Here they come. Bell just had to get loose because there were three orange jerseys all over him. He tried to get it to 21, Darrell Woolard. We said the score is 11 to 2 with 517 to go in the second quarter. Florida scored first on the safety when Willie Willis Pagui snapped it over Jeff Beagles, the Miami punter's head in and out of the end zone for the safety. And then an excellent drive by Miami with very good poise by the young quarterback Steve Walsh as he threw to Blades, Brian Blades for the touchdown, and then the two-point conversion to Blades. And the field goal completes the scoring by Miami, the 37-yarder by Cox. Three receivers to the left side, one to the right side. Bell gets in the shotgun, doesn't like the look of the Miami defense, and calls timeout. See, this is what you get when you have six inexperienced wide receivers running a lot of different formation in the fit formations. In the past, Florida has been pretty basic, Bob. They've had the great athlete throw them the ball, try to lock on with your offensive line, and then let the guy make the yardage. And that's what they ran at Oklahoma, and that's what they were successful doing at Florida, too. And then they mixed in the pass. But uh, right now, Florida is struggling to, I think, gain its composure, trying to trying to get every, trying to seek an identity here for this offense. I hope you'll stay with us at halftime. We have a lot of interesting information for you. We'll go back to our studio, Greg Sager. We'll also have scores of other games being played around on the first real weekend of college football, 1987, our big gainer of the week, and a preview of our September telecast schedule on TBS. We have a beautiful opening four-game schedule, and we'll be telling you what that is at halftime. That's where we'll be next week, Tim. Get a good view on this as you lock in as you fly in in your airplane. Scott Field, Starkville, Mississippi. That's your landing area there. As the Tennessee Volunteers, who play Colorado State today, play the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Superstation viewers can catch pregame coverage with College Football Grandstand at 12.15 next week. There's the time remaining in the second quarter. Miami leading 11-2. It'll be third down seven from the 33-yard line, 39-yard line. Florida Gators. Four wide receivers in the game. Bell in the shotgun. It's complete to Simmons. To the 30-yard line, first down, Florida. Penalty marker down at the point of the tackle over on the far sideline. Although McDowell was the man who made the tackle. There's the flag. A big roughing the passer added to a first down pass completion. And now let's see what happens here. They're going to tack on more against Miami again for a penalty. Defense, 15 yards, first down. Flagrant face mask. Let's see if we see it. Here's 25 is Stacy Simmons. Making your move right there. Simmons ought to go get the first down. Bubba McDowell, number 48 from Merritt Island, Florida. Looked like he had a hold of him. Five penalties now for 45 yards against Miami. And it's down to the 15-yard line. 30 yards on this drive have come at the expense of Miami penalties after the play. Gators trail 11-2, but there's Redmond. That time for 36, Anthony Williams. He was hit by Daniel Stubbs. They'll say he got back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down 10 from the 15. And there you see Danny Cilio there. And it's unfortunate for this young man. I had prepared all summer long. 6'2", 282 pounds, the strongest man on the University of Miami football team. A, a fellow that could have been a catalyst for this defense, but has been ruled ineligible by the NCAA. Second down 10 from the 15. 4-12 to go in the first half. Kerwin Bell with an audible. Fumbled on the snap. Fallen on by Miami. Hurricanes ball. 
George Myra Jr. fell on it. That's Florida's first turnover of this ball game. There have been two hurricane turnovers. Looked like Myra was faking the blitz in there. Might have been off sides on that snap, Bob. I'm not sure. Let's see, let's see another angle. It looks that it, it looked if Myra was in the neutral zone when the ball was snapped. If that's so, he's off sides. But life goes on. Toss to the coin. George gets the ball. The 16, Miami. Gets the ball to Warren Williams. Nice job on the run. Nine yards to the 25 yards line. Ricky Mulberry, 32 with a tackle. Okay, watch number 45. Now he's pointing. Pointing up in the line. Oh, now, was he across the line of scrimmage? If he's across the line of scrimmage, then he's offside. Or if he's in that neutral zone. And I think Tracy Daniels snapped the ball when he jumped and Kerwin didn't get it. But that's the breaks of the football game. You know, you got to make up for those. Second down and less than a yard for the Hurricanes. They lead 11 to 2. They dodged the Gator pull at that time. line clock down to 316 to go in the first half it has been a low scoring ball game and Tim we expected it probably would be as it's the first game of the year for both teams both teams with pretty good defensive teams and uh, both squads with questions on offense Un unquestionably the strength of both these teams lie in their in their defense uh, I think Miami's got a little bit more to work with on offense in terms of their running backs and wide receivers their defense is really strong, man for man, as you go down the line. In every position, they're solid. They could be, they will be, I think, what we're seeing here today, the, one of the best defenses in the University of Miami's seen in a long, long time. Out to the 31-yard line. 2.53 to go in the first half. And Miami continues with their lead of 11-2. Miami hope to keep the ball on the ground. Now, Melvin Bratton, who just tore up the Gators last year, has only three yards total carrying the ball in six attempts in this game. But Warren Williams has been doing better, has 38 yards and nine carries. Yeah, but see, you don't, you don't count that little three-yard dump that he caught and took it 40 yards. So Melvin it's, it's, Bratton, that's right. Right, yeah, so is that a run or a pass? It's obviously recorded as a pass, but... Good defensive play against Warren Williams that time. He stopped for no gain. Pat Moore with the tackle, number 45, the inside linebacker for Florida. Let's just watch this Gator line. As opposed to firing off in the cracks, they're more head up and reading and moving to the football. And uh, they're a pursuit-oriented defense, and that, of course, has been very effective for, uh, for Zaven and a lot of defensive coaches around the country. Just a different style as opposed to running or passing an offense. Third down 11 from the 23 now for the Hurricanes. Charlton, 56, comes for Florida. He does, but they pick him up nicely. It's complete to Brian Blades. Blades is short of the first down, and a penalty marker is down. They had held him short of the first down. Watkins on the tackle. You think there's some bad blood between Florida and Miami? You've been seeing it on the field today. Blades was held short of the first down. But then the personal foul, and now the first down. This is the, excuse me, Bob, this is the throw they're really not excited about Steve Walsh making. You saw it took the ball a while to get there. Um, you know, he, he took us, it didn't look like he was going for his head. If that, if that forearm's going for the head, that's one thing, but it looked like he was trying to wrap him up to me. Jarvis Williams called for that even though he missed. Of course, the Miami fans would be saying, oh, Foley's the Gators. I'm not for the Gators. You're for defensive backs. Right. Whatever jersey they're in. Here's Warren Williams with the reception. It's loose. Who's got it? It may have been fallen on by Brian Blades. We'll wait for the call. Florida football. The third hurricane turnover with a minute to and four seconds to go in the second quarter. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. What a bottle. 
beer. What a bottle, what a beer, Boulder beer. Hi, this is Rick Datsman, live from Hialeah Racetrack. We're at the MDA Magic 102 Sailathon, and it is tremendous. We have thousands of cars here from every major manufacturer, and it's all to benefit Jerry's Kids. $100 will be donated for every used or new car sold to Jerry's Kids. Get on out here for 1.9 APR, up to $2,000 cash back. All kinds of incentives will be here till 10 o'clock tonight, all through Monday. Don't wait, don't miss it, it's all for you. To Williams, Warren Williams, and we've talked about his intensity running up field. And sometimes when you do that, you lose your concentration on hanging on to the football. Moore tore it out, and Lewis Oliver. Looks like yeah. Lewis Oliver came in there and took it away from Brian Blades. A 66 yard drive going previously and lost it on the fumble. Bell goes low as his man. Stacy Simmons incomplete. They say he stepped out of bounds. Tony Lomack. It's Lomack. And it does not count as a reception. The officials say he was out of bounds as a comeback. An experienced strikes again, Bob. An experienced receiver will feel that sideline. lomax has got a lot of room. Now shorten it up. Tried to get it down, but you notice he caught the ball right in, into his body as opposed to breaking down early, catching the ball in his hands, but that'll that'll come with time. I like, I like the look of this young man, Tony Lomack. He's only 5'8", a sophomore from Tallahassee. Got real quick feet, good acceleration on the break. Could be a good one in time. Former running back. It'll be second down 10 from the 34. Florida, 57 seconds to go in the half. Here comes Stubbs. And they're going to penalize Kerwin Bell for trying to throw the ball and intentionally ground it. Stubbs was the first man back there. He didn't get Bell, but he certainly set it up for 86. Derwin Jones, who, by the way, had been taken out of the game earlier and had been shaken up, but Jones is now back in there. Stubbs is a man who was the key on this play, though. The pressure comes up the gut there as Stubbs, well, no, Stubbs is first, works around Williams, and then the ball might have been down right there. If the ball touches the ground, the ball is down. And uh, Ir Kerwin just tries to unload it. Down, a third down, a wide the clock on the rim. Well, Kerwin's having himself a nightmare here today. Look at all those penalties. Kerwin, six out of 14 for 55 yards, and now under that pressure, he's penalized for intentionally grounding. Williams has been holding up well as Galen studies the grass. Williams has been holding up well against Stubb. They've been having a good matchup there. Third and 22. It's 96, Daniel Stubbs. Credit the secondary of Miami for covering those Florida receivers, though. Bell had all kinds of time to get rid of the ball. Time, there's just nobody home. An excellent job of coverage by Dave Campos, defensive backs at the University of Miami. Hawkins misses him, but <laughs> he is not to escape too far. And now 32 career sacks for Daniel Stubbs. He has two in this game so far today. 21 seconds to go in the half. Miami continues to lead 11 2. You talked to him, uh, Stubbs is from Red Bank, New Jersey. I was in watching films with him the other day and uh, just kidding with him because he sounds like an attorney when you're talking to him. I said, what are you going to do? Go to law school when you get out and he's got nine hours to go to graduate. And then he says, yeah, I'm going to law school. He'd probably be his own agent. He isn't going to have a problem. <laughs> That's the one way to solve the collegiate agent for the players issue. That's right, but so if, you want the, everybody's if you want the big money, Danny, you got to paint something on the side of your head. <laughs> You're just too straight for the big one. Yeah, it's, it's got to get more into your favorite guy, uh, Bosworth's mold, would you say? Yeah, all right. You're not for that, are you? Uh, you know, uh, Stubbs is a great guy. Boz had a tough time in the exhibition game. Uh, Seattle played last night. He was welcomed into the NFL. 21 seconds to go in the first half. Well, he's coming after the punt. Jimmy McAndrews gets it away. Not a very good one. Cleveland Gary. Excellent Florida coverage on the punt so far today. They've been right down there every time. A 39-yard punt. A loss of one on the return. Andy Newman is the man who made the stop. And one of the Florida.
Florida players is down. That's Bartra. Owen Bartra. He's a critical and a very important special teams player and a very important linebacker for the Florida Gators, even though he's not a starter. 12 seconds to go in the half. Beautiful day in Miami, Florida. TBS season opener with the Gators and the Hurricanes, and Jimmy Johnson said he had a great recruiting class last year. Craig Erickson is perhaps the quarterback of the future for the Miami Hurricanes. Leonard Conley's a running back. Matt Britton, an excellent linebacker. Eric Miller, Leon Searcy, they're just some of the great freshmen. Florida, look at this. Kyle Morris and Herbert Perry may be the quarterbacks of the future to replace Bell. Emmett Smith, you've seen him carry the ball a time or two today, the most highly recruited running back in the nation last year. And watch out for Willie McGregor. Grady from Palatka, Florida. He played both sides of the line. Maybe a great one for Galen Hall. Parker's okay. Tim, Florida, speaking of these young, pure freshmen on this Florida roster, they really need the freshmen because, of course, they're down to, right now, as of this game, only 79 players on scholarship instead of the maximum 95. I think 38 of them had ever played an actual snap of college football, so they're really young. Walsh, airing it out. Nice pass. Couldn't be handled by Alfredo Roberts, number 87. It falls incomplete with six seconds to go in that. Walsh, we're talking about Craig Erickson, who's the young, pure freshman backup from Atlantis, Florida. Walsh is the third-year sophomore, and, and, you know, Walsh must be hearing footsteps. Everybody's talking about young Craig Erickson. And you talk about pressure. Of course, you've got pressure replacing Vinny Testaverde, but I think it's a much more dramatic pressure to have be watching every day that freshman in, in the, that's backing you up, throwing those ropes out there, knowing that you can't do that, knowing that your advantage is, is an intellectual advantage and a field generalship advantage. Second down, 10. Walsh, he's going to take it long. Nobody's home. Throws it out of bounds. And the time expires. Ending the first half of play. In the final meeting until 1992 of the Miami Hurricanes and the Florida Gators, they have two quarters left. Hurricanes 11, Florida 2. Great plays in SEC history. Brought to you by Valvoline High Performance Motor Oil. Valvoline, because motor oil is not just motor oil. 1970, the Sugar Bowl matches the Ole Miss Rebels against Arkansas. Losers only to number one ranked Texas 15-14 five weeks earlier. But the Rebels surprise early, jumping out seven to nothing. Later, facing fourth and one at the Razorback 18, Archie Manning breaks Arkansas' spirit, taking the snap and scrambling right. He breaks two tackles on the way to the end zone. Frank Royal's Razorbacks never recovered as Ole Miss held on for a 27-22 victory. And Archie Manning's numbers on the day, 21 completions and 35 attempts, one touchdown running and passing, and over 300 yards total offense earned him the 1970 Sugar Bowl MVP award. harder working four-cylinder engines demand extra protection against friction. Valvoline four-cylinder formula delivers. To help keep your four-cylinder engine from wearing out, make sure it's Valvoline you're pouring in. Valvoline four-cylinder formula high-performance motor oil. Come on, on down, on down the road. Motor oil is not just motor oil. Presenting the faucet. Funny thing about faucets. You might think they're all the same. Until you look into a Price Vista faucet. Price Vista faucets are, in a word, fabulous. Since they have a heart of solid brass, the fact is they hold up better and longer. No fooling. Nice, too. They're affordable. So when you're faced with getting a faucet, get a Price Vista. The fabulous faucet with the funny name. Mom's magic meatloaf is weighing on you like a ton of bricks. Send the bubbles of Alka-Seltzer to the rescue. Because speed is what you need to lift the heaviness off your stomach and relieve your heartburn and pounding headache fast. So for fast relief, let the bubbles rise to the occasion. Alka-Seltzer to the rescue. Try new extra strength Alka-Seltzer. More of what you take Alka-Seltzer for. In these days of microcomponent technology, 
you can find office copiers that do almost anything. Some duplex, sort, automatically reduce and enlarge. Can I use your copier? It's down again. Try 23. Thanks. Some collate and margin shift. Is your copier working? Sorry. Oh, terrific. But at Rico, we found that the most popular feature our copiers deliver is that our copiers deliver. Rico, copiers built to work and work and work. Hello, I'm Craig Sager. Just ahead, the SEC 87 halftime report. We'll have highlights from the first half along with the rest of the scores from around the nation. For the Dooleys, like father, not like son. We'll explain. But first, let's go back to Bob Neal and Tim Foley at the Orange Bowl in Miami with the band of the hour. Thank you, Craig Sager. Hurricanes leading 11-2, and the Hurricane Marching Band onto the field right now. They perform their renditions of popular movie soundtracks. The director of bands, William B. Russell, the drum major, Jim Smeltzer. sellout crowd at Orange Bowl Stadium in Miami, Florida. It's halftime. Hurricanes leading 11-2. When we come back, Craig Sager will bring you up to date on what's happening in the world of college football today. Stay with us. salutes the people with faith enough to try and patience enough to smile. To all the people who still believe in dreams and in themselves. Here's to the winners, all of us can be. Holiday Inn welcomes and reminds you, if you're a winner, we're on your way. Welcome to the SEC Halftime Report. Vinny Testaverde and his Heisman Trophy may be gone from the campus at Miami, but nine starters are back on defense, and they have looked very, very impressive in the first half. The offense has turned the ball over three times, but the Miami defense has kept Kerwin Bell and the Florida Gators out of the end zone. Here are highlights from that first half. A big rivalry, as we mentioned earlier. They will not play again until 1992. Miami was back to punt. The, the ball sailed over the head of punter Jeff Fegels. A safety for Florida. The Gators go on top two to nothing. 
But a short time later, Miami came right back. Quarterback Steve Walsh to Brian Blaze, one of the best receivers in the country. A great catch over great defense by the Florida Gators. That made it 6-2. They decided to go for the two-point conversion. The combination worked for the touchdown. Might as well go for the two points. Works again. Walsh to Blaze. That made it 8-2. Greg Cox ended a field goal. 11-2 at the half right now. Miami on top of the Florida Gators. In addition to Florida and Miami games today that will have an effect on the national rankings. Texas at ninth ranked Auburn. They're expecting the largest crowd to see a football game in the state of Alabama. 85,000 in the newly expanded Jordan-Hare Stadium. LSU's Mike Archer is the nation's youngest head coach. He's just 34 years old. His career begins with his 11th ranked Tigers of LSU taking on 16th ranked Texas A&M. And a family feud right now. Georgia has gone on top 16 to 14. Virginia was leading 14 to nothing. It's Georgia coach Vince Dooley against Virginia and Dooley's son, Virginia freshman Derek Dooley. But it uh, probably won't have much uh, effect on me because once the game starts, I'm not going to be worried about who's on the other side. Uh, but I can't say the same for Barbara. Uh, she <laughs> will be very worried about what's going on on the other side. We're proud of Derek and glad that he made the team, glad he's made the traveling squad. Uh, unfortunately, he hurt his finger, and I doubt if he'll ever uh, get in uh, and see any action. But uh, we're proud that he's coming to, back to Athens, Georgia. And it'll be strange for him because for the first time, he's on the other side. And for the first time, he'll be wearing orange. Seven. Barbara Dooley pacing both sidelines. Derek has not seen action so far that game in the third quarter. George on top, 16-14. to 14. Other teams in the Southeastern Conference on today's schedule. Tennessee at tonight taking on Colorado State. The Volunteers already with one victory this year. Alabama and Bill Curry taking on Southern Miss. No score first quarter. Later on at Southwest Louisiana at Mississippi State. Another milestone for Joe Paterno and more of the same in the Big Eight. We'll have the rest of the scores and highlights in a moment. You're watching SEC Football on the Turner Broadcast casting system. You don't have to look far to find some high-performance luxury sports coupes with impressive performance. You don't have to look any farther than Mazda's all-new MX-6 GT, a turbocharged intercooled road machine that'll outrun those guys and run you many, many thousands less. It's all part of our intense commitment to your total satisfaction. That's the Mazda way. See your local Dave Broward Mazda dealer today. Pa, it's time to paint this house with blending and Duras latex. Why, there ain't no need for primer. You can go right over the paint stain that's there. And you can wash right up with water. Why, I even got a good deal on it. If you hate to work, Builder Square brings you Glidden Endurance Exterior House Paint for just $8.87 per gallon. Good, Ma. You get started. Builder Square. The more we sell, the lower the price. The lower the price, the more we sell. Starting Monday, South Florida's first midday news is Eyewitness News at 11.30. Recently graduated and are continuing their academic careers. Eric Hodges is in our College of Dentistry, while Brett Whitman has been accepted in the University of Florida Medical School. We believe that athletics and academics can coexist on our campus, and we're committed to making sure that they do. The Southeastern Conference, a national resource. The Coast to Coast Big Gainer of the Week is brought to you by Coast Soap in two invigorating sets. Feel alive with Coast. With Iowa less than a yard away from the end zone, the Tennessee Volunteers turn impending doom into a TD when linebacker Darren Miller intercepts the pitch from Chuck Hartley at the four and rambles coast to coast for 96 yards. The return gave Tennessee an important 14-3 lead as the Volunteers squeaked out a 23-22 win over the Hawkeyes. Welcome back to the SEC 87 Halftime Report. The nation's longest winning streak belongs to Penn State. The defending national champions have won 12 in a row. This afternoon, they can give Joe Paterno his 200th career win. Right now, Penn State on top 31-16. Clemson with three field goals and three touchdowns in the first half with a 30 to nothing lead. For the last 25 years, either Nebraska or Oklahoma has won or shared the Big 8 title. Oklahoma has wasted no time whatsoever. They scored shortly after the opening kickoff, leading now North Texas State 7 to nothing. Nebraska no score that in the first quarter. 
quarter. North Carolina, Torn Doran has had a tremendous game so far, 165 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Miami of Ohio over Central Michigan, 9-3. That is in the third quarter. West Virginia, Major Harris threw a touchdown pass to Harvey Smith. Akron is leading Western Michigan, 10-7. Boston College, remember Boston College won its last eight games of the 86 season, also on top of TCU. Georgia Southern winning 21 to nothing. Everybody else later this afternoon or tonight. This is our sixth year of college football on TBS, our fourth season of the Southeastern Conference. From top to bottom, we believe the SEC is the best in the country. We invite you to join us each Saturday for the best from the SEC. On September 12th, a rematch of last year's thriller in which Don Smith, the man Tennessee had prepared to stop, faked a handoff, darted to his left and raced unchallenged as Mississippi State upset Tennessee 27 to 23. Smith is now in the NFL, but Tennessee is seeking revenge against his alma mater. When someone beats you like that, where well, we had the game won almost the whole game, uh, paybacks are due. Uh, we got to. We just got to go in there and go to Starkville and play the best game we can. Tennessee against Mississippi State, Saturday, September 12th. On the 19th, Alabama's Bill Curry in his Southeastern Conference debut against the Florida Gators. Curry was not a popular choice among the Bama alumni. He knows the best way to silence the critics is to win. Florida features Kerwin Bell, one of the nation's leading quarterbacks and a favorite of many to win the Heisman Trophy. Bill Curry already in the defense, and Kerwin Bell, Florida's offensive leader, Saturday, September 19th. Auburn returns 15 starters, including Andre Bruce, one of the most dominating players in the SEC. This talented linebacking core will be tested by Tennessee quarterback Jeff Francis, who has directed the Vols on a six-game winning streak. Auburn and Tennessee in one of the great rivalries of the South, September 26th. We'll be back with scores and highlights following the game. Miami and Florida, it's at the half, 11-2 in favor of Miami. Bob Neal and Tim Foley coming back, but first, a visit to both schools. The state of Florida hasn't grown in the past 20 years, but its population has doubled. The University of Florida is helping solve the problems brought by growth. Through biotechnology research dedicated to improving health care, and developing new disease and weather-resistant crops. And new animal vaccines to improve livestock production. Through engineering research that will improve communications and protect our fragile coastal environment. By maintaining high standards in undergraduate and professional education. This is the University of Florida, today. College football, the great American spectator sport. But at some universities, learning is another kind of spectator sport, where you may be just another face in the crowd. At the University of Miami, we believe learning should be a rewarding, personal experience. Rather than dormitories, residential colleges are home to students and professors in an ideal living and learning environment. The University of Miami offers one of the most extensive honors programs in the country. And as a private research university, we draw the brightest scientists and scholars to our faculty. The University of Miami, a private, selective university where education is not a spectator sport. Miami leading 11-2 at halftime. There have been 11 penalties in the first half. Steve Walsh has thrown for 184 yards, surprising some folks. Bell only 55, also surprising people. Tim, how do you see the first half in terms of trends in this game? Well, I think that the University of Miami has been able to accomplish what they wanted to accomplish. And you're gonna, we're going to show you a, 
a few plays here that show that. They didn't want to overload Walsh by throwing the ball down the field. There's a couple of things you see here. Look at the time. No pressure, nobody in his face. Eventually, Richardson gets there, but it takes a while. Now, dump the ball off to a running back, an easy throw, and let the running back do the work. Yeah, that's recorded as a pass completion for almost 40 yards, but most of the work is done by the running back. Now, Florida thin on defense, trying to work in some younger players so they can build up their level of experience, substitute Dwayne Glover into the game. They dump a little pass to Irvin. He freezes Glover, and here he goes. He's off to the races. So the inexperience on defense has hurt Florida. And the other problem that they've had, and they knew they were going to have, is the fact that they knew that Bell would be tough to protect. And here you see Danny Stubbs, and he's coming, and Jimmy Davis trying to keep him out of there. But you see him rip that arm down and turn the corner. But another thing I want you to notice, he isn't alone. Hawkins is there, and it doesn't take long for other people to come in. So Bell's been under pressure all afternoon, not just from Stubbs. And remember one thing, Vinny Testaverde won the Heisman for Miami last year, and in his opening first half of play, he threw two interceptions. So it was a rough start for Bell, but don't count him out yet. We'll be back in just a moment. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Looking out for number one. The Toyota Standard Bed. Quality makes it a Toyota. The price makes it a great buy. Looking out for number one. Who could ask for anything more? When you're at the game, wear what the pros wear. When you're out in the cold, wear what the pros wear. When you're under the sun, wear what the pros wear. Only the authentic NFL Pro Line brings you the same gear NFL players and coaches use from the people who make it. NFL tested, NFL tough. The Sideline Sweater by Cliff Angle, unbeatable. Parkas by CB Sports and wool caps by Rossmore, ready for action. Team visors by Staco for the winning look. Even a genuine Riddell helmet. Now you can have it all for any NFL team. The authentic NFL Pro Line. Wear what the pros wear. It's all in the NFL Pro Line catalog. For your copy, send $1 to NFL Pro Line, 10812 Alder Circle, Dallas, Texas, 75238. September 10th and 11th, South Florida will make history. As the world focuses on Pope John Paul II's visit, look to Channel 10 for complete coverage. From the presidential welcome and parade to the mass at Tamiami Park, the Channel 10 Eyewitness News Team will bring you an unprecedented 15 hours of live television. Thursday, September 10th, 1 till 8, and Friday, September 11th, 7 o'clock till 2. The Papal Visit, an historic event marking the spirit of our community on the one and only Channel 10. Florida at halftime, Miami leading by a score of 11 to 2 in the final meeting between Florida and Miami until 1992. In the first half, first down's pretty much even, rushing yards, neither team successful. But look, Steve Walsh, the inexperienced third year sophomore quarterback, 184 yards, and Kerwin Bell on a search for the Heisman, only 55. Total yards, Miami way out in front, but Miami has the three turnovers. Time of possession, pretty even. Early in the ball game, Florida scored when Willis Pegues snapped the ball over Miami punter Jeff Beagle's head. It went in and out of the end zone. Those are the only two points that Florida has scored. The Miami scoring came when Steve Walsh engineered a beautiful drive, then threw a 23-yard touchdown pass to Brian Blades, came back with a two-point conversion to Blades, and then a 37-yard field goal by Cox. Benes with the kickoff. Watkins will touch it down in the end zone, and Florida will come out to their 20-yard line to begin the second half of the Orange Bowl in Miami, along with Tim Foley. This is Bob Neal, our spotter, entering his umpteenth year. Helping us in the booth is Kim Anderson. Alex Vergara is doing a great job with statistics, as usual, and our booth is managed by Nikki Nichols, who is in her commando gorilla garb today. 
Von Bell. Only 55 yards. Let's see how he maintains his poise and comes out here. And now his receivers with the inexperience and the line with the inexperience do have at least two quarters under their belt. Consecutive games with an interception, five. Here comes Warren Williams. Driving to the 30-yard line. Tim, in the beginning of this game, you mentioned Warren Williams being underrated. He is, in fact, Benny Blades is not underrated. All-American. Some people think he could be the number one or two draft choice in the pros next year. If it's my pick, he'd be number one, depending on how this year goes. Well, it all depends on, too, the needs of the team that, that, that's drafting him, but he has it all, Bob. He's a big hitter, great speed. He's the quarterback of the Miami secondary. Gets everybody in the right spot. Second down four, Warren Williams. Close to the first down. Miami leading 11-2. Blades picks off Bell's first pass attempt of the second half. And Miami with the 11-2 lead is threatening here again. Jimmy Johnson and Galen Hall have the same types of styles in terms of head coaches in that they give a lot of autonomy to the si assistants. Uh, Gary Stevens, the offensive coordinator, talks with Johnson about the offensive game plan, but he's pretty much got a free hand to develop it as he, as he sees fit. And Jimmy sees his job as more organizational and motivational. Third and one at the 27th. Double tight ends. Walsh, broken play, short of the first down. Clifford Charlton will get credit for the tackle. Walsh turned around and nobody was home for the handoff. That was a big broken play, too. Whoop. Emmett went the wrong way, or Steve went the wrong way. Mel. And Cox will come in for a 44-yard field goal attempt. They will spot the ball on the right side hash mark at the 34-yard line. Cox hit a 37-yarder earlier. He's a senior from Fort Lauderdale. Miami's leading 11-2. And it's good. Greg Cox, two for two to start 1987. A 44-yarder, and it's 14-2. The Hurricanes over the Gators. 12-50 to go. You must have called it all a thousand times. Then one day, you got the call. What's this, rookie umpire? for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Compliment for that gentleman. This bar's for you. When you ever see a new egg glass through with you. I used to think being a country singer was all glamour and bright lights. But you know, it's also hard work. And once in a while, those bright lights can give you a headache. That's why I always carry Goody's headache powders. When you ever see a new egg glass through because goodies works fast when I need it. And when you work for a living, sometimes you're gonna need it. Portions of today's game are brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Here's Edgar Pennies with the kickoff. It comes down to number 36, Anthony Williams. Probably not a wise idea to return that ball, only out to the 13-yard line. And Kerwin Bell, who threw an interception on the opening play of the second half, comes back out, and he finds himself in a hole again. 
like a lack of communication there by the deep men. That's always the deep man's call. Kerry Watkins back there can call off Anthony Williams, but sometimes if you're not expecting a call or if you get your eyes focused on the football, you don't hear anything else. Irwin Bell has Woolard, number 21 on the left side, and Simmons, 25 on the right side, hands to the tailback of Tavius Gould. About the 15 yard line. Florida has been backed up several times. Two times Miami had opportunity to score and turned the ball over, and that's why Florida was backed up. This time it was on an ill advised kickoff return. The play they just ran was one that worked well for them last year. Pulling both Sims and Williams, trying to trap the strong side of the line. Obviously, University of Miami had done, done some work on that play. Second down now. Overthrew his receiver. It was intended for tight end Walter Odom. And number 32, Selwyn Brown, was cruising through the area looking to pick it off himself. But it falls harmlessly to the turf. Third down nine. Good drop by Randy Shanahan, strong side linebacker. Gave the undercover cover for that uh, throw. And that did not enable Kerwin to pop it in there like he'd like to. Had to get a little bit more air under it. And as a result, it was incomplete. Now five defensive backs in there for Miami. They're all good. Bain Blades, Brown, Ellis, and Bubba McDowell. Third and nine from the 15 of Florida. Trailing 14 to two. Incomplete intended for Odom. Coverage by linebacker 22, Randy Shannon. And in comes Jamie McAndrew to punt again. Oh, they're pressuring Bell. Watch them coming. Hurricanes defense. Walking to the top. Good job by Jimmy Jones. But not a bad job of protection. Good job of protection. It opens up there. Bell delivers the ball on time. Now, we haven't been counting drop balls, but just the ones I can remember. That's four. Almost blocked. Here's a heads-up play by McAndrew. But a great defensive play by the Hurricanes. He pulled it in, didn't get it blocked for a possible safety or touchdown. Does get it out to the 20, but that's where the Hurricanes will take over. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. When you own your own place, you put a lot more into it. Because you care more about what it'll be like in the future. You know, at Publix, Almost all the employees are stockholders in the company so that the people that work in the store own the store. You can see a difference when you shop at Publix. And if you wonder what that difference is, it's the owners. Hi, this is Rick Dasman live from Hialeah. We're at the MDA Magic 102 Auto Tent Sale, all for Jerry's kids. We've got thousands of cars here from almost every major manufacturer in the world. It's incredible, and it's all to benefit Jerry's kids. We've got 1.9 APR, up to $2,000 cash back, $2,500 minimum trade-in. It's all here. We're going to be here up to 10 o'clock tonight and all through Monday. Hurry on out here. We're waiting for you. Hialeah Racetrack. To the 13. Needs to get to the 10 for the first down. Huey Richardson once again with the tackle. And Jimmy Johnson's Hurricanes threatening again, leading 14 to 2. And that, and that kind of running is what inspires even the players on the sideline that are watching. That second effort, that third effort. And that's what Galen, Galen Hall is looking for some for some from Galen Hall is looking for that type of effort from some of the Florida defenders at this time. That was a mouthful. Yeah. 10.42 to go third quarter. Miami 14, Florida 2. On the third down. Bratton hit hard. It came loose incomplete. He did not have possession. Big tackle back there. Big hit by the secondary player for Florida. I think it was Ricky Mulberry who came up to make the stick on Bratton. It was Mulberry. He had sunk back in there to defend against the fade and popped back up to take on Bratton. Walsh, good statistics today. One touchdown, one interception. Greg Cox comes in to attempt the field goal on the fourth down now. The ball at the 13. That'll make it about a 30-yard field goal. Walsh, so far, or Cox today, so far, two for two. He's hit a 37 and a 44-yard field goal. This one right down the middle. 17-2 Miami. 
You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. This Labor Day weekend, grab the cash from Toyota. Four days only, factory to dealer incentives up to $1,500 on vans could give you the biggest savings of the year. Plus, get up to $2,000 cash back from the Toyota factory distributor on Elegante vans, all Ellie Bromes. Get up to $1,500 cash back on selected half-ton long bed trucks. $1,000 back on all Corolla SR5 sport coupes and all MR2s with T-tops. Grab all the cash you can at Toyota dealers all Labor Day weekend. This is the Greyhound, a breed apart, but not totally unlike other dogs. Just like other pups, Greyhounds are a study in perpetual motion. Like any pet, they crave affection, enjoy being touched. They have a nose for curiosity, and very little escapes their attention. But here, the similarities end. This breed of dog is born to run, loves to race. Greyhound racing is outrageously exciting, and yours to enjoy for as little as $1 at Biscayne, Florida's great Greyhound track for over 60 years. With us on SEC football this year. Nice job as usual, fellas. 17 to 3 uh, to 2, Miami leading. Florida's only score has been a safety. That came on the snap that went in and out of the end zone early in the game. In and out of the end zone, Florida will bring it out to the 20 yard line, trailing 17 to 2. And Irwin Bell somehow has to get his act together. Six for 17 for only 55 yards and one interception. How about the Florida offensive line and the backs helping protect Bell? He has had considerable pressure today. At this particular point in time in the game, Bob, what's going to happen is Miami's linebackers are going to start getting more depth. I mean, that might have been an effective mechanism earlier on in the game, but right now they're going to be backing out of there. They're going to know that Florida's got to throw the ball to get back in it. First and ten from the 20 Gators. Emmett Smith, the rookie, close to the first down. Emmett Smith, last year's most highly recruited running back, makes something happen. He gets a first down. That's Lalar. Uh, excuse me. He may be a little bit short. They give him nine yards. Cedric Smith leading the way there. Walter Odom trying to get the block, but see, Emmett Smith runs through the tackle of George Lyra. Second down, about one. Emmett Smith, first down. Oh, he's a yeah. to the 36, first down, Emmett Smith. He was highly recruited. Everybody knows that. The, the team that had the seven yards on that game, the closest shot at getting Emmett Smith other than Florida that ended up with him was, was Auburn. And Galen Hall said, I said, why did you get him and Auburn didn't? He said, the only thing I can tell you is I think we won over his family in our recruiting process. The family you know, has a lot of influence on the youngster, and that's why he came here. Says it looks like he's getting a couple of yards, and I look up and he's got five, and that happened last time. This time, nothing. And he runs into 96 Danny Stubbs, welcoming Emmett Smith into big time collegiate football. <laughs> Little pop in the top there. C94, Greg Mark, Stubbs taking the inside, just chasing the, deep, the offensive lineman, Bobby Sims there. Chasing all the way. His job is to get in that back pocket in that particular call, and he did and found Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith from Pensacola, Florida. 5'10, 200 pounds. Walter Payton signs. Second down, 12. Completes it out here to the 40 yard line. It is a first down, and Emmett Smith with the reception. It's not a first down. He just got back the yardage they had lost here. Back to the 40. Second and 12, and bring up third down and long yardage again. Bell looking downfield. It's not there. Smith back in. And Smith is actually an awfully good receiver now. And the ball pops out as he's still struggling. Obviously, they've blown it dead. University of Miami fans didn't like that call. Just Boom. Yeah, forward progress has been stopped. Third down. About six.
defensive back. At University of Miami, they put a premium on speed and quickness, not so concerned about size, and he's a converted defensive back that's put on a few pounds, but plays the pass extremely well, made a nice move on that side. One after is good. Miami 24, Florida 2, 7.58 to go, third quarter, and here's Shannon kicking off the belt, second interception. Now, you remember on the last play, Billy Hawkins really gave Kerwin Bell a whack. And even if there's not pressure coming, you get it enough, you're going to feel it anyway. He tries to knife it out there, but Shannon makes a nice move on the football. Bell thought he had it, thought he could squeeze it in there, but not this time. And that's going to open the gate. 24 to 2, Miami. Big brother taught me responsibility real fast. I take my little sister to ballet, music lessons. I watched her grow up. And boy, the question she had. I didn't have all the answers, but I was there. Maybe that's why I enjoy being a Delta Red Coat. I get a great feeling out of helping people. Only now, I take my daughter to ballet. Delta, get you there. We get you there with care. Rocking down the highway, keep your engine rolling with a motor oil specially formulated for your car. Valvoline has high performance formulas for turbo cars, four cylinder cars, hard driven cars, all cars. Oh, down the highway. Valvoline, motor oil is not just motor oil. fans a little bit upset that Florida a little bit there are a lot upset that Florida has decided not to play the Hurricanes again until 1992 ending a series that began back in 1938 we're getting a measure of revenge here Harry Watkins will touch it down to the end zone let's see it from another angle now Bell looking weak side. It's not there, and he he goes to Anthony Williams as kind of a uh, as an outlet. But uh, again, a beautiful move by Randy Shannon, and that's what makes this University of Miami defense so strong. Go ahead, where do you want to throw it? You want to throw it on Donnie Ellis? He's the best man to man guy. Shannon's a great coverage linebacker man. Meyer even gets good drops in the secondary, and they get good pressure from the front four. So they're going to be a tough defense to deal with. Dave Wanstead's got himself a handful of good players. to number 23, Wayne Williams. Not close to the first down marker. Florida trailing 24-2 with 7.50 to go in the ball game. Kerwin Bell, remember, trailed Auburn last year when he came back in after injury 17 to nothing and engineered an 18-17 come from behind win. Bell is the kind of guy who can bring you from behind if you got to get there, even though he's struggling a whole lot today. defense today three sacks two interceptions one fumble recovery last year's Miami defense only yielded 12 and a half points a game I mean that was a fine one that was the best since back in 1966 and uh, they say this one could be better by the end of the year that's he going some that's exactly right uh, in the championship season they had the national championship season they got blown out by Florida in the first game and then they just came back strong and won 11 in a row and they had a very strong defense then. Second down set. This one's complete for the first down over the near sideline. And the receiver, Wayne Williams, number 23, 11-yard gain. Back to our studios in Atlanta and Craig Singer. An easy opener for North Carolina. The man to watch is Torn Dorn. He ran over, around, and through the Illinois defense. 165 yards and a pair of touchdowns as North Carolina romps over the Illini. The final 34-14. Back to the Orange Bowl with Bob Neal and Tim Foley. Well, North Carolina pounded Illinois today. North Carolina considered one of the leading contenders for the ACC championship along with Clemson and Georgia Tech. Wayne Williams carrying Rod Carter with the stop. 
and they play the backside. They play the cutback on that eye so tough. Carter lined up at the weak side linebacker spot, begins to pursue down the line, just waiting for that eye back to begin to cut it back, and he attacks. He fires upfield, and he really put the hammer on that time. Rod Carter, the great year for Canes last year, and he's back again. It'll be second down eight, Florida, from the 46-yard line now. some scores at college football action around the nation today. Oklahoma having no problem. That's a first quarter score against 1AA North Texas State. Clemson in the third quarter having no problems with Western Carolina. A lot of people think Clemson will be a top 10 team and win the ACC. Penn State rolling 38 to 16. Tremendous pressure again. Kerwin Bell's been running for his life all day long. And you see an ice pack on the right hand of Steve Walsh. I'm not sure what happened. We'll try to find some information about that. If Walsh can't throw the ball, look for the freshman, Craig Erickson, to come in. But we don't know exactly what the nature of that is. Well, Bob, they talked about trying to get Erickson into this game sometime. They weren't sure whether it was going to be the type of game they could fit him in there. Galen Hall wishes it wasn't the type of game they could fit him in there. 5.39 to go, third quarter. Third down, 13 Gators. Their own 41. It's complete to number 80, Mark McGriff. The first big completion of the day for Kerwin Bell. To the 29-yard line, a gain of 30 yards. touch by Kerwin Bell here running four up the field just lays it right in there to Mark McGriff and he's a cousin of Lee McGriff who is a great receiver for Florida saw him earlier uh, before the game started good catch by the way not Anthony Williams that's Benny Blades from Miami who came off the field number 36 looks to be okay we'll check on him Emmett Smith sees nothing finds a little bit about a yard for the freshman Benny Blades the All-American free safety for Miami helped off the fields just a moment ago and they're looking him over on the sidelines right now looks like they're rubbing his calves Bob and I would suspect that it's cramped uh, there's a lot. Of, it's hot down there, and uh, often a problem for Dolphin players. You see him bending over, trying to stretch out his leg, and I'm sure that's what it is. By the way, we understand on quarterback Steve Walsh. There's the Alabama score, early lead. Steve Walsh bruised knee. That was not his hand. The ice pack was on his hand, which was on his knee, which is injured. Bell almost had it picked off. He was under tremendous pressure. Penalty marker down. Now let's see, that was Danny Stubbs, the last one to get up off of it. There was no intentional grounding in my opinion there, so the penalty will probably go against Miami if there is one. Could be a big play from the Gators' point of view. Well, I don't get that one. Looked like there was a receiver there. Maybe no receiver was in the area. Let's see it, Tim. It's really not important whether there's a receiver in the area or not, Bob, if there's a player in the area. That's right. And he throws it out. You don't see it on our replay. There were several white jerseys out there where the ball landed, so I don't know about that call. Nevertheless, it goes back to the 46-yard line. I don't know if, they get, if Galen gives out purple hearts or not, but they ought to give one to Kerwin Bell. Because they're... This University of Miami defensive line is not, not treating him with kid gloves. If, if he, they get close, they want him to feel their presence. Third down, 35. Almost picked off again. Emmett Smith was the man in the pass pattern. Down near the 30, Benny Blades, who was shaken up, is back in the game and was covering on that play. Well, they've been all over Kerwin Bell today. That was a matter, again, of inexperience, Bob. I, I, 
feel like a broken record, but Emmett Smith is supposed to run a circle up. He's supposed to be heading it up the field. Book it, son. Get up, get open. And uh, <laughs> because your buddy number 12 is getting killed. Keep running. That hurricane punt rush is back there again. Cleveland Gary at his 11. Florida chases him out of bounds at the 15-yard line. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Hi, I'm Phil Donahue. Hi, I'm Geraldo Rivera. Hi, I'm Sally Jesse Raphael. When the headlines become conversation, look to 10 for the best talk in town. We cover the topics that make a difference in your life, so join us weekdays for Donahue at 9. Geraldo at 10. Sally Jesse Raphael at 11. Starting September 7th, look who's talking. Then stay tuned for South Florida's first midday news, Eyewitness News at 11.30. Weekday mornings on the one and only Channel 10. Yours? No, I'm... Mother said she found it in your closet. I don't know. One of the guys must... Must have what? Look, Dad, it's Where not... did you get it? Dad, Answer I... me. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? I learned it by watching you. Parents who use drugs have children who use drugs. Story on your screen, 4-13 to go in the third quarter, 24-2, Miami leading Florida. Miami's defense has been the story of the day. Steve Walsh, who had a banged up knee, his right knee, an ice pack on it earlier, is back in there at quarterback, along with Melvin Bratton and Cleveland Gary in the offensive backfield. is they're a middle of the pack in terms of wins and loss SEC team simply because Florida has so much inexperience but Galen Hall had an interesting point about it Tim when I talked to him in Gainesville he said you know if you if you hang with us if our fans will hang with us minus the big injuries and such I believe we'll be a better team as we go along instead of a worse team because our young players will be gaining experiences and he says experience I think will be better later in the year I feel I think he feels really good about the recruiting years that he's had the last couple of years even though they've had fewer players he's got quality players and uh, last this last season wasn't he able to get 30 this last season so he's got a full stable that's offsetting penalties here both players have been thrown out of the game that's Rod Holder and Webby Burnett Webby Burnett they're out of here I think what they're trying to do is keep this from getting out of hand the University of Miami loses its starting center. The Gators lose a, a backup nose man. Now Miami will probably go with Bobby Garcia. He is the number two center. Garcia is a sophomore from Cooper City, Florida. That's a big loss of Holder. Miami leading 24 to 2. 349 to go, third quarter. Cleveland Gary thrown for a loss. Cleveland Gary's junior from India down Florida, very highly recruited out of high school, went to Georgia. Transferred from Georgia to Miami. He's not fulfilled his expectations as a running back. He was, he was highly regarded coming out of high school, but he's a good one. And he's big, 6'2", 230. Well, Tony Wise and Art Kehoe, that the men that coach these offensive linemen have to be happy about the way that Hurricane offensive line has performed. They were concerned about Mahan and Sullivan on the left side. They both played admirably. O'Neill has come in, although he went through double surgery in the spring, has played well. Walsh under pressure. And he's going to go down at the 13-yard line. Miami has not gained a first down this quarter, speaking of Florida's defense. Third offensive possession, but uh, Miami still scored 13 points. You see Charlton coming in there. He's the rush in. He takes that offensive lineman on, mashes him back. But Huey Richardson has really come on. He's, I bet he plays more and more as the season goes on because he can come too. Look at this. It snapped out of the end zone again for another safety. Florida with four points. 
and Willis Pagese, the long snapper, number 58, has snapped it through the end zone twice today. That's further than some quarterbacks can throw it. You gotta get your glove up though anyway, right? Don't just watch it. Make me look good. Put your hands up. <laughs> Willis Pagese. He's just pumped up. Willis, you're excited. You're not used to this game enthusiasm, game, game day adrenaline. Two safeties by Florida, one at the very beginning of the ball game. And now Pagese has snapped it in and out of the end zone again, and I guess the Hurricanes fans can chuckle at it a bit with the 24-4 lead. 2.32 to go in the third quarter. of Florida got a tough way to go this year. They open here with Miami. They do get a little bit of a, a, what would be called a breather next week up in Gainesville to play Tulsa. But then on the TBS telecast, they'll be at Birmingham against Alabama. And then you see, they go right into the really the heart of it. Mississippi State, LSU, they've got a tough one. It's out of bounds on the free kick. It goes out at about the 28-yard line. Penalty marker is down. Miami has a schedule that's a little more to their liking, particularly the next couple of weeks. They'll have a chance to regroup, although Jimmy Johnson says sometimes having two weeks open can bother you. But then, bang, bang, Arkansas away, Florida State away, and Florida State has their best team in many years in most people's estimation. That'll be played in Tallahassee. Then Miami has some uh, opportune teams on their schedule following their opening. Miami has a little bit better shot later on. They play Cincinnati, East Carolina, Miami, Ohio, Virginia Tech, Toledo, and then close out with Notre Dame and South Carolina. Sometimes, somehow you get the feeling that Jimmy would rather be on the road than at home. I don't, they haven't lost on the road since uh, early in 84. Illegal procedure is the call against Miami. It'll be re-kicked back from the 15-yard line now. this afternoon. It's, uh, it's been a wrong route, a sack, a drop ball. And it's got uh, Galen Hall trying to read the back of his hand from real close up. It is second down, 10. Stacey Simmons, Bob. Looked like he picked off Rod Holder as Ro Holder was uh, pursuing Bell out of bounds. Did you ever have one of those days, Bob? <laughs> yes. That's what Galen's thinking right now. Is this over yet? 2-0-9 to go in the third quarter. A lot of time remaining. Miami ahead by 20 points. Bell led three big comebacks last year for Florida Gators, but he had a lot more weapons with which to work, like Alonzo Highsmith, who, by the way, is here today. Dead ball foul after the first down was made. Late hit into offense. It'll be first down 25. Uh, 
excuse me, of course, Alonzo Highsmith from Miami is here today. Draft choice by Houston. Let's watch that call again. Actually looking for Odom over the middle. Doesn't really have time to set up. Points to Odom. Runs out of bounds. Stacy Simmons coming back to help. The play is over. And he gives him a little, gives Rod Carter a tap on the side. At the 22-yard line now. It'll be first down 25 for Kerwin Bell and the Gators. short of the first down. They'll have to get the ball out to the 47 for the first down. I think the officials in this game have the specific intention of not letting this thing get out of hand. They know that there's bad blood between these two schools and uh, they don't want sw fists swinging and uh, anything that's close to being flagrant, they're going to flag. Second down, 19. We were talking about Miami's great running back, Alonzo Highsmith, third man picked in the NFL draft last year. He's here today, still has not signed with Houston. And on the sideline for the Hurricanes. Bell can't find anybody. There he goes again. Short of the first down. Took a big hit at the 35. Ernest Parrish put his 250 pounds on Bell that time. Eight-yard gain for Kerwin. Kerwin Bell is just a class act. He's not getting much support today, but uh, just a fantastic kid, a good leader, the type of man that's uh, just fun to coach. Galen's had a lot of, uh, I think, a lot of enjoyable moments with him. He has got Galen's personality in the sense that he is low-key and he's not a yeller and a screamer. Third down, 11. The receiver, Willie Sneed, number nine, from Melville, Florida. And this is what Gator fans are more used to seeing. The folks have, over TV waves haven't seen it for a couple of years. In Gator Field, that's what it looks like. Pow, he snaps it right in there. Got a little bit of a sidearm delivery. Gets rid of the ball in a hurry. 17 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Keep him honest and run. Nothing at all. Wayne Williams is hit at Miami defense, having themselves a whale of a day. Three sacks. They've been picking off the passes, recovering the fumbles, and stopping the run. I don't know if you can ask them to do much more. That's the end of the third quarter. Miami 24, Florida 4. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. The new communications technologies can help you work more productively, especially when you know you can count on them. That's true. Our company was already satisfied with Southern Bell service. But then they said, look, there's a better way to move data, digital. Of course, the trick is combining the right technology with reliable people. Absolutely, John. With Southern Bell, we don't worry, because their network has the backup systems and the people we need. And we know they're going to be there whenever we need them. Reliable service helps make you a company with the future. It's been around a long time, but never like this. High-tech pinfall. Integrated by Don Carter's All-Star Lanes. Register for leagues forming now. degrees down there on the field this sunny humid afternoon in South Florida University of Miami Hurricanes with a commanding 24 to 4 lead going into the fourth and final quarter and that's the statistical story of this ball game 189 yards to 167 yards but the offensive stats don't really tell about it neither do the turnovers really because they're even what really tells the story is that Miami defense Second down, 11. Complete out there to the running back. Uh, let's see, they may be short of the first down. Wayne Williams with the reception.
interception. Ellis with a tackle. And they may bring the change in. Official timeout. They'll bring it in for a march. So Galen Hall has had questions coming into this game, and nothing could get answered in three quarters of football. But, but the questions remain, are there any receivers here that are going to be the big plays? Both tight ends are considered good. And have, Walter Odom has had a, had a bad day catching the ball. McGriff caught a big 30-yard pass. The offensive line still got questions, and nobody's really raised their hand to say, I'm your guy in the offensive backfield yet, Tim. That's what... That's what's frustrating, I'm sure, from a, from an off offensive standpoint for the coaches as they watch. You know, it's that they're not sure who to go to, and what's got to happen is somebody has to emerge out of that pack because you, I don't think you can continue to rotate in the six receivers. That somebody's got to start getting the playing time, getting the experience, and you got to put your money on somebody. Third and one, Wayne and Anthony Williams in the backfield. Bell keeps it and dives forward. The first down. The attendance today, 77,224. The idea from the Florida standpoint here, Bob, actually what they've been trying to accomplish is stretch out that Miami defense. You know, you don't want to bunch up and hang it in there together. Spread them out. That way their coverages are easier to read, the blitzes are easier to see coming. But the Miami defense was certainly up to the task today. First down, Gators inside the Miami 40. Well, can't find anybody. Down to the 32-yard line. Stubbs is everywhere. Kerwin's going to dream about Danny Stubbs tonight. Dream isn't the right word. Nightmare about him would be a better word. This Danny Stubbs, the senior from Red Bank, New Jersey, in the glamour position they like to call that rush in for Miami yeah, Jimmy Johnson said they moved him from outside linebacker to down linebacker and he didn't really like that and it said he resisted for about one practice so they lined him up way out there and told him to turn you loose and that's fun second down three from the 32 closer to four yards well some time this time can't find anybody now does it's complete to Stacy Simmons Oh, what a day. Simmons out of bounds on the near sideline at the 27-yard line. Just barely got the first down. Had it by a mile. Came back. Lost it. Regained it. Did get the first down finally. Good job of protection here by the Florida offensive line. Good drop to see Selwyn Brown. Hug in the middle of that field, preventing the angle in. Bell starts to move around, then dumps it to Stacy Simmons. Now, Stacy, get up field. Whoop. And when you get up field, take the ball with you. Nevertheless, it's a first down at the 27. We have 13-11 to go in the ball game. Miami with a 20-point lead. Not much off right tackle. Anthony Williams, the ball carrier, number 36. They say, coaches say, Gary Stevens talked about it, Galen Hall talked about it, uh, Heimerdinger talked about it, developing patience in a quarterback. And in this situation, a coach has to have patience. <laughs> because you know, Shula would have made us run to Gainesville you know, after a game like this, but uh, you just have to realize you've got young and experienced people. It's going to take a while for them to develop maturity. Second down nine. says Budweiser. This Bud's for you. 
Your face takes enough abuse, so you need the Gillette Good News Plus Disposable. Its Lubrismooth strip is designed to reduce irritation, so shaving feels so good. Good News Plus. Okay, last time. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Today's game is sponsored in part by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Well, 12 24 to go in the ballgame. The Miami defense get these stats three sacks, three interceptions, one fumble recovery, and that's just part of the story. Four Florida turnovers. Three interceptions have come in the second half. Now Miami has an opportunity to just run that ball. Cleveland Gary carrying it. Rondy Weston on the tackle. And Tim, you've got to expect pretty soon here that we might get a chance to see the pure freshman quarterback. Craig Erickson come in here as Jimmy Johnson said he did want to get him a little experience, but Steve Walsh has been a real story. <laughs> i tell you what, the spotlight, the spotlight was on him before this started. He certainly responded. 11 of 19, 184 yards. He's thrown a big TD pass, one interception. Played with poise today. He looked like he had poise from the opening get-go. Second down, six. teammates have come through for him. It's just like uh, not much difference on the pass that Bell just threw in the corner that Donnie Ellis picked off. Not much difference between that one and the one that uh, Brian Blades caught for a touchdown down the other corner. So uh, the teammates have to come through for you regardless of what position you play. A quarterback can't do it all. He can get you in a position, hopefully. It's a great contrast. Here's Florida having to ride the quarterback. Miami in a position with some strong players getting a chance to support the quarterback. Off Bratton. Well, Melvin Bratton has been bottled up all day long, but Miami really hasn't needed a lot from him today, thanks to the exceptional defensive play. There's number seven, Craig Erickson. Jeff George, you know, the, the highly touted recruit uh, that was recruited at Purdue and then left when Fred Akers went up to Purdue, said he was going to come to Miami, had agreed to come down here, and when he heard about the recruiting of Craig Erickson, I don't know if it's this simple a story, but then decided to go to University of Illinois. I know he wanted to play in the Midwest anyway, but Craig Erickson took the scholarship here knowing that the very excellent Jeff George was here. So Erickson's a competitor. Complete. For the first down to Charles Henry, the tight end. Uh, excuse me, uh, short of the first down. And when you look at the uh, Florida defense, the Florida defense have actually, has actually played well. If you take out a couple of plays, take out the touchdown pass, take out the long run by uh, Bratton, take out that uh, Dwayne Glover fell down, and they haven't played too bad. They've played excellent football in the second half here. Steve Walsh was one for two passing the ball. <laughs> this only experience that he had had. Now he comes in and is close to 200 yards in the air today. 10.22 to go in the game. It is complete at the 44. Nice diving grab. to see this again and this is what Gary Stevens is talking about there are times when a quarterback has to throw the ball or give the receiver a chance to make a great catch if he had put that ball in Blades' chest the Florida defender would have had it going the other way so he gives him a chance to make the great catch and Blades makes it let's uh, talk a little bit as we watch uh, Steve Walsh work here uh, you know the rap is that he doesn't have the cannon arm although these out patterns he's throwing do have some good velocity and snap on the line receiving on the day. Now, if you're a Florida fan, you're thinking, now, why don't they clamp these backs? Why don't they get better pressure? Why do they let them throw that? It's because you got Michael Irvin on one side and Brian Blades on the other side, and you're more concerned about a 50-yard gain than you are about a three-yard catch. The idea is they threw it in the right place, get up there and make the tackle. Walsh, 227 yards in the air today. What an opening game he's having. had turned out and then cut it 
it upfield. And Walsh had tried to lead him down there. The coverage was good by Gary Watkins during the incompletion. 9.51 to go in this ballgame. Miami 24, Florida 4. Only two safeties. The entire scoring for Florida. They just can't get it going today. Bell has thrown for 149 yards. Florida has rushed for only 43 total over the... Second and 10 from the 32-yard line. Bratton and Jerry in the backfield. To Bratton. Down to the five yard line. Mark Murray with the stop. Let's have a look now at our Budweiser scoreboard. Action around the college scene today. In the second quarter, Oklahoma laying it on one double A North Texas State. Nebraska leading Utah State 14 to 3. Clemson with no problem over Western Carolina late in that ball game. West Virginia over Ohio University in the fourth. Boston College leading TCU in the third. Alabama, no problem with Southern Mississippi. In a couple of weeks, we'll see Alabama play these Florida Gators at Birmingham. Next week, Tennessee and Mississippi State. 6-4-2-30. This is what Bakis is going to be doing next week, all week long. Standing and, and thinking about the dog snaps into the end zone. He was just practicing. <laughs> Near touchdown, but Bratton fell down. So incomplete. There's Pegues. He's practicing. Well, I don't think he needs, in a sense, practice. He just had all the strength. He must have snapped both balls in the air about 35 yards. Both of them over the head of Jeff Beagles, the punter, one early in the ball game, one in the second half for Florida's total points, four. Third down nine from the 14-yard line. Miami leading 24-4, 8-16 to go in the ball game. Here's Cleveland Gary to the one.
let me be guilty. Calvin Klein's obsession for men. I'd know him in the dark. Exclusively at Burdine. Bob, I got a great deal on my new Acura. Oh, yeah? If you think you have the best deal on a new Acura, think again. Acura of South Florida on US 441. Yeah, you'd have to be crazy to try to run a school like Brandel High. James Belushi in The Principal, rated R. Do I look crazy to you? Sneak preview Friday. The truth is what we're after, but it's not always easy to find. Sometimes you have to go out and look for it. Starting September 7th, look who's talking. Geraldo, weekday mornings at 10. Third largest crowd in Orange Bowl history. Watching Miami lay it on Florida, 31-4 to 4, with 8.09 to go in the ballgame. Number one, Edgar Benes is home to kick off. Number 20, it's Michael Lomax. Lomax is going to receive for Florida. Tony Lomax's nickname is Tilo. Former running back. It's just 5'8". It came loose. 22-yard line, Florida football. Let's see if Cleveland Gary was down or did he get technically into the end zone for the touchdown. Good effort there. Runs through a tackle by Reuter, Selman Brown. I would have to say that his weight now is down. I, he was laying on the defensive back. The defensive back was on the ground. And I'd have to say he was down, but a good effort anyhow. Not, not that it makes a big difference. I think the technicality on that ruling is that your hand can touch and be down. And even though his weight was all on it, none of the other parts of his body maybe didn't occur. But that probably the kind of ruling being was technically accurate. <laughs> right. Bell. Incomplete. Trying to hold on to that hot pick skin was Anthony Williams. Good quarterback pressure by Bill Hawkins all over Kerwin Bell. in it today and he's just been hounded all afternoon. Billy Hawkins is tracking him here and rides him into the turf. He certainly has paid the price today. 7.51 to go. Miami 31 to 4 leading in this ball game. Second down 10 from the 22 yard line. Now they're looking at other receivers. Number one Ed Frazier's in there. Here's the draw to 36 Anthony Williams. About three yards. Stopped at the 25-yard line. We've seen a little bit of the, the freshman, highly touted Emmett Smith at running back for Florida, but so far today, I would agree, Tim, with uh, with the assessment of the Florida coaches, is that none of their running backs, Wayne Williams, Anthony Williams, Octavius Gould, Cedric Smith, etc., have stepped forward and really shown anything. Now they do have a junior college transfer who hasn't played today. They expect some potentially good things from uh, Lloyd Hopkins from Youngtown, Ohio. Might see him a little later in the year. Wide open Octavius Gould. Big gainer here to the 45-yard line. Donald Ellis with the tackle. 19-yard gain and the Hurricanes are happy. Well, they're certainly back in the race. I don't know if they're number one, Gary, but uh, they're back in the race. Jimmy Johnson has, and his staff definitely have made a statement with this game. They've got some good players, and it wasn't all just Vinny Testaverde last year and Jerome Brown. They've got some talented, talented athletes here that, who can compete with anybody. Simmons, Sneed, and Frazier, the wide receivers, three of them in the ball game on first down, 10 for Tried to throw it to Mark McGriff to tie it in. Myra couldn't hold on. Yes, his daddy was the great quarterback. George Myra Sr. University of Miami. Time he gets protection of po pocket. Finally closes up. Good read by Myra. Puts himself in a nice spot. That's okay, George. You're a defensive player. Your hands are torn up. Fingers dislocated. You get the next one. Second down, 10. Once again, more problems on the exchange. Kirk Bell falls on it back by the 42. It has not been a good day for Florida. They have, they have not only been facing intense pressure from the Miami defense, but Florida self-destructed a great deal, too. They, Galen Hall 
said he was concerned whether his team would be really in full mid-season kind of form when he got here today. So many changes, so little experience behind the front liners, and uh, some of his worst fears are coming true about this game. But he did say, and I think he, I think he means it, that he does believe this Gator team is going to be better as the season goes along. And I would go along with that assessment. Now, there's an important factor that you have to consider there, and that's whether they stay healthy. And he's the first one to admit it. He says, we are thin, and we can get thicker. We can add depth with experience, but if we, of course, lose people, then, uh, then we're right back in the same boat. So the probation and the loss of scholarships, uh, forget, in a sense, the television a loss of exposure. The scholarships, only 79 instead of 95 on scholarship on this Gator team, and it's, no question about it, hurt them a lot. Now's the time to vacation in Europe with Delta. We'll give you a free car for an entire week. You can see all those sights you've dreamed of seeing with your own car free. We'll fly you to England or France or Germany or Ireland. For Delta's low fares, call your travel agent. Delta gets you there with care. Just sign here, man. But this is more than what your sign says. For well, sure, you're using your credit card instead of cash. Excuse me. If your service station charges a higher price for credit cards than cash, take your business elsewhere. Take your business to Gulf, the people who don't charge you more for credit cards. Come again. Gulf, one low price, cash or credit. City of Florida about to lose it here today. They're trailing 31 to 4, only 5 minutes 58 seconds remaining in this game. Some dark clouds blowing in over the orange bowl right now. It's been primarily sunny today. The sun has gone behind the clouds. The temperature's been up in the low 90s. Really much hotter than that right down on the field. Bell again, all kinds of problems. This time it's number 94. Greg and Mark with the play. be a sack. They may have decided that Bell was a runner at the time, and he's shaken up a little bit as you watch him hold his right arm to his side going off. You see Greg Mark coming off the block, puts the hit on him and drives him into the ground. That's, that's a painful blow to your shoulder on both ends of it. Bell Bratton, Brian Blades, happy hurricanes. Now Butch Davis, the defensive line coach, has played Mark in Maryland and Jimmy Jones. Penalty marker as the on-rushing hurricane punt rushers bumped in to 16 Jamie McAndrew. I think it was Robert Bailey who actually hit him, so they'll call running into the kicker here, running into the punter, and that'll come back, and Florida will maintain possession. Kerwin Bell looks like he's hurting there. As, as Tim pointed out, he fell hard on that right shoulder, his throwing arm. His backup is Pepe Lascano, a senior, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a freshman coming into the game, either Herbert Perry from, happens to be from Bell's hometown, or Kyle Morris. But at this point in the game, you might just want to get your senior in there, Pepe Lascano. I hate to see him reaching up running inside the jersey like that. Yes, Lascano. Yeah. As you mentioned, Pepe's a fifth-year senior. He went to St. Thomas Aquinas High School, just north of here, and it was a manager two years ago. First down, 10 from the 45. We'll keep you posted on the injury to Kerwin Bell's right shoulder. Scano's coming out firing. It's complete. To Octavius Gould to the 40-yard line. Lascano is in here to just try to try to hold the ship afloat at the moment, but the worries are going to be on Heisman Trophy candidate Kerwin Bell. What they're checking, Bob, is as your shoulder is rammed into the ground like that, it compresses, and there's a couple of ligaments that lay in over the top, and that's what causes a separation. And, uh, that's what they're checking right there. You say that as though you know it from personal experience. You see my stripes? It's complete for a first down pass to the 34-yard line. That's Clifton Reynolds, the number four tight end with the reception. Bell was injured uh, last year. Several games. 
just been a marvelous competitor. And the thing that I really enjoyed about Kerwin Bell is, of course, from Bay, Florida, Mayo High School, unrecruited, most valuable player in the SEC as a freshman, non-scholarship. And, you know, he hasn't changed at all. He's just the same country kid, just great to be around, uh, pleasant, kind, patient with all the reporters in the media. Scano was looking for Ernie Mills. They did not connect. Donald Ellis covering it goes incomplete. Brings up second down, to 35. Clock down to four minutes, eight seconds remaining in this ball game. Cedric Smith, number 39, and Emmett Smith, number 22. We have enough Smiths and Williams in this ball game to start a law firm. Yeah, Stubbs, Williams, Smith, and Jones. There you are. <laughs> Sounds good. Stubbs is already heading in that direction. As he told me. What a game he's had today. He's been quiet of late because he hasn't needed to. But when the pressure was on, Danny Stubbs was all over the Florida quarterback. Scano doesn't connect. Intended for Emmett Smith. It'll be third down. Ten. But you know the other side of that is, Bob, uh, from an offensive lineman's standpoint, every time you don't hear Danny Stubbs, David Williams is doing a good job. Now, we don't come in and say David Williams did a great job on that play. We just, you don't hear him. And then all you got to do is come up with three or four big plays a game. And you get credit for having a great game, although the other man might have controlled you for the majority of the game. The coaches will know when they look at the ever-popular game Scano on third and ten. He's got pressure. He completes it to tight end Clifton Reynolds, short of the first down, and Reynolds takes a big hit at the 28-yard line. 94 Greg Mark was all over Lascano that time. Clock down to three minutes, 41 seconds. Next week, our TBS sports cameras will be at Scott Field, Starkville, Mississippi, for the University of Tennessee Volunteers and Mississippi State. 12.30 kickoff time. Pre-game coverage begins at 12.15. 3.24 remaining in this ball game. Lascano. It's complete to the tight end, Clifton Reynolds to the 12-yard line. There they go, Pepe. Lascano now, four out of six passing for 30 yards. He's not looking bad at all here. But the real question on the sideline for Florida's hopes is what is the nature of the injury to the right shoulder of Kerwin Bell? We do not know yet. They're looking at it. He was in a clean hit, taken hard to the ground, pressed that right throwing shoulder into the turf here. 31 goal, 39 Cedric Smith in the backfield. Lascano in the end zone, and it was dropped by Willie Sneed. He was there, he couldn't hold on to it. Two fifty-one to go in this ball game. The Orange Bowl was filled with seventy-seven thousand plus here today, and many have left trying to beat the traffic around the. Orange Bowl area here. Not exactly easy and an easy out in the center. Scano averts the rush. It's picked off. Another interception. Donald Ellis with his second interception of the day. It'll be a touchback and come out to the 20-yard line with 2.44 to go in the game. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. When you're at the game, wear what the pros wear. When you warm up, wear what the pros wear. When you take time out, wear what the pros wear. Only the authentic NFL Pro Line brings you the same gear NFL players and coaches use from the people who make it. NFL tested, NFL tough. Coaches caps by Sports Specialties and AJD with a mark of a winner. Heavyweight sweats by Starter and Champion. Built to take it when you put on the miles or when you're pumping up. Coaches shirts and shorts by Starter and Bike, the way you want to look. Now you can have it all for any NFL team. The authentic NFL Pro Line. Wear what the pros wear. It's all in the NFL Pro Line catalog. For your copy, send $1 to NFL Pro Line, 10812 Alder Circle, Dallas, Texas, 75238. 
the story of this game for Florida. Not only are they getting pounded 31 to 4, but their quarterback, Heisman candidate, Kerwin Bell, leaving the field with an injured right shoulder. And now into the ball game is Craig Erickson. He's a true freshman, his first play as a college athlete from Atlantis, Cardinal Duke High School, Atlantis, Florida. Erickson handing off to Gary. Bounces it outside and gets no yardage. Kelly, then Kosar, then Testaverde. Steve Walsh had himself a fine game today. We're not discounting him, but the, the young, upcoming guy is probably Craig Erickson. Craig Erickson, obviously, from watching, from listening, from living down here, he's got the skills of those three prior superstars. So again, and again, as you said, not discounting what Steve Walsh has done today. loose over there, but I believe it maintained the play, remained in the uh, possession of Miami. Uh, Erickson's dad was a backup quarterback at Northwestern University under Arab Parsegian many years ago. Craig is a member of the National Honor Society. 55th, he graduated in his high school class at 290 with a 3.2 grade average. He's very smart. He came here even though the heralded Jeff George was in, and announced his intentions to come to Miami. Erickson said, I'm a competitor. I'm coming anyway, coach. I want to go to Miami. I take the scholarship. He's here. Jeff George transferred to Illinois. Completes his first pass. Out to the 33-yard line to Andre Brown. Number 83, Andre Brown. For first down. 123 to go in the game. And Craig Erickson has now had his first game experience. If you want to talk stats, how about three sacks, four interceptions, one fumble recovery by this Miami defensive unit? What a job they did today. Some confusion there in the Florida backfield. Erickson telling them where to go. Just keeps it, sneaks it. Probably knew that nobody knew what the call was. <laughs> And uh, if that's the case, that's a little bit of poise for the youngster. The wisdom. Steve Walsh. 234 yards, one touchdown, one interception. He showed great poise. Miami's quarterback job is in good hands. What's going on? The cheering is a, a police dog down in the east end zone. He's got a hold of a gator and is tearing it up. <laughs> Running the clock out now. 45 seconds left in the game. That's Cleveland Gary. There it is. The Gators, uh, <laughs> it was an inflatable Gator. Oh, my. Going to the dogs. Oh, it's been one of those afternoons for Galen Hall and his staff. Anybody that's been associated with sports has had them. You just try to get them behind you as fast as you can. Learn from the lessons and go on. Erickson. Gee, look at that arm. Oh, incomplete. But you can see the power of the arm. He was looking for Andre Brown. Clocked down to nine seconds. Silio even liked that throw. Yeah, we were talking about Steve Walsh having the good arm. Well, there's a, a possible difference, would you say, Tim? Yeah, there's no question about it, Bob. He's got the power. But he also has a year to learn, which is nice. Uh, you mentioned Jeff George. He was thrown into the fire at Purdue. Uh, imagine if Kerwin Bell had been a freshman here. I mean, he might never recover from that psychologically, never regain his confidence. But uh, Erickson's going to be a spot player, and when they need him, they'll play him, and uh, he'll be learning the system. It's a difficult system to pick up here. That'll be penalty against Miami with nine seconds to go. Lewis Cristobal freshman from Miami jumped off on the right side, a redshirt freshman. So the Miami Hurricanes have given notice that uh, even though they finished number two last year in the nation after losing to Penn State, they've given notice that they are back and contenders again this year. Now they have two weeks off, these Hurricanes do, before they get back into two very difficult away games at Arkansas and at Florida State. So you can't be talking about how great they are. They're the first ones to tell you that until they their first three games. That's Bill Lang, number 24, is going to take the punt. Beauty here, Jeff Beal. Lang is down. This game. 
game is over. Miami 31. Florida 4. Great American face. Strong. Sensitive. The Great American Razor. Actra Plus. Solid. With the Lubra Smooth Strip for extra protection. The Great American face deserves the Great American shave. Actra Plus. Only from Gillette. Okay, last time. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? can't be back. He's sick in the hospital. Yeah, they said he might never come back. All right, lunkheads, lapse in 30 seconds. Today, more people survive cancer of the colon, thanks in part to a test that provides early detection. And Eckerd pharmacists have given out over a million of these tests free. Mr. Connolly, what's so funny? I'm just glad to have you back, coach. To an Eckerd pharmacist, nothing's more important than your health. The man hugging Jimmy Johnson is Sam Jankovitz, who is the athletic director here at the University of Miami. <laughs> Those two good friends are very happy with a big win, 31 to 4 over Florida today. And now let's look at the Alka-Seltzer stats. First downs, Florida wins that battle. Rushing yards, Florida wins that battle. Passing yards, Miami narrowly. Total yards, Miami narrowly. Florida with more turnovers. But those aren't really the stats. Unofficially, the, the stats that you really want to talk about are the Miami defense. Three sacks, four interceptions, one fumble recovery, and a dominating defensive day. We'll be back with our players of the game right after this. Today's harder working four-cylinder engines demand extra protection against friction. Valvoline four-cylinder formula delivers. To help keep your four-cylinder engine from wearing out, make sure it's Valvoline you're pouring in. Valvoline four-cylinder formula high-performance motor oil. Come on, he's on down, he's on down the road. Motor oil is not just motor oil. Here's to the winners, those who move mountains. Here's to the miracles they make us see. Holiday Inn salutes the people who go the distance and then some. To all the people who still believe in dreams and in themselves. Here's to the winners, all of us can be. Holiday Inn welcomes and reminds you, if you're a winner, we're on your way. Storm clouds moving in over the Orange Bowl here. The clouds came in early today for the University of Florida as they were defeated 31 to 4 by Miami. Today's Holiday Inn's players of the game. For the University of Florida, not much good to, can be said today, but you can talk about Lewis Oliver, and he'll be heard from all year long. The fine safety, one interception, one fumble recovery, had three tackles. He's an excellent safety to go back there and play in tandem with Jarvis Williams, Tim. No question about it, a walk-on a couple of years ago. He is really developing as a premier defensive back. And our University of Miami player of the game, you guessed it, Danny Stubbs. Danny Stubbs with a couple of sacks, six unassisted tackles. He was credited for another half sack, and he is, in fact, the dominating player that they said he would probably be this year. The major concern here, as you see Dubs putting, Stubbs putting it on, Bell, is uh, that that was not an infrequent occurrence this afternoon. Uh, everybody on the uh, Miami defensive line got a piece of Kerwin, and unfortunately, he left the field late in the Back fourth with more